Hola YouTube, my name is Ricardo Lino and I'm a wheel addict. Welcome to another skate talk. After the last one, after the last skate talk with John Julio, which is right now 41 years old, I thought it was cool to keep that age. So without no further ado, I'm gonna call Remy Cadier. Just like the watches, Cartier, Cadier, I think that's how you say it. So let's call him and let's see how you say his name. By the way, he lives in Amsterdam. So let's see what's up with Remy. Good evening. <laughs> what's up? How are you doing, Remy? Yes, I'm fine, man. And yourself? I'm good. I've been learning. I just learned one new French word or at least a French name. <laughs> At least the French name, that's right. <laughs> okay, so for those of for those people listening to this that don't know you, which I don't believe there might be any, but anyway, if there's anyone listening to this who don't know you, do you want to tell to the listeners who's Rémi Cadier? Uh, yes, uh, I'm, uh, as they say in our, uh, in our little bubble, I'm uh, an OG. OG Blader since uh, the beginning of the 90s. Uh, of course, like many of us playing on skateboards before, before there were, before we knew about rollerblades. So I started blading in uh, 94. One of my inspirations to start was actually Mark Heineken, the, one of the founders of Senate. He used to uh, live in Amsterdam and uh, he would skate the, the Museum Square halfpipe with, uh, with a, a big fake Viking tail and um, this one of those stupid flyaway helmets. But to me, it was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen. I used to uh, go there to the museum plan to, uh, to, 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 do, to write graffiti and to, to, uh, and to uh, play basketball. And uh, it was like one of the writer's benches. So I would, I would be there with all my uh, graffiti buddies. And um, there were hardly any bladers back then, uh, but there were a few who uh, caught my eye and then finally when uh, I had a birthday and I uh, yeah, I was really shit poor when I was growing up but I had a birthday and I saved some money and then uh, I, I'd, I'd made a, a friend an inline skater there whose name was uh, Guno Crony he's like a real real OG guy does he like still from... skate? he skates a little bit yes he doesn't skate aggressive much anymore because he's uh, 45 I think Already. Uh, me come now, on, not because he's forty-five. Because there's other things in life, but <laughs> not the, not the th age. This is, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, look who's talking. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, so uh, started blading back in the nineties, and, and um, that was even before the skateboarders knew that we uh, that we were gay. Uh, <laughs> and uh, did did you say that? <laughs> I did. Yeah, Let yeah, me yeah, guess, you're did. wearing all the colors available in the world right now. Of course. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so uh, that's my, uh, my my start in blading. And uh, I was really lucky to uh, to start blading in uh, in Amsterdam because it's like if, you, you know, if you've traveled the world by plane, then you know if you want to go to Europe, there are like a few hub airports and also... Like nowadays, you can smoke weed and hash everywhere. But back in the day, like in the United States, if you were there, it's really hard to come by. And uh, Americans, if they want to go to Europe, they think, well, we're going to Amsterdam first. So that's the reason why a lot of the, the, the rollerblading tours came by Amsterdam. And also because we'd already had like a scene established way back in the day. You know, there were some, like I said, some OG heads and you uh, had one the of the biggest of the shops in Europe back then, right? <laughs> yes, we had the uh, Rodolfo's, and who sadly they they just closed down like three three weeks for or like a month ago. Um, Do you think that, that's were like they the... just inline skating, or were they also skateboarding? <clears throat> no, that it was a skateboarding shop, or actually a roller skating shop in the beginning. I think roller skating and skateboarding and some surf stuff because that was like the oldest skate shop in Europe. They started in 1978. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, when rollerblading became big and they'd always been selling vans and stuff. Like that was one of the places like, you know, the sneaker business now is really huge and people 
uh, have custom sneakers and stuff. But a lot of people don't know that Vans, like the the, the skateboard sneaker brand, mm -hmm. used to also do like uh, IDs. You could go to Rodolfo's and uh, you'd have like the two models that they actually had back then. And you would say, well, I want that color and that color and those color laces. And they would actually send a fax out to uh, California, I think, where they were based. Mm -hmm. In South California. And then, yeah, and then like a few, like a, a two months later, you would get your sh um, And that's actually also the place where I bought my first pair of skates. And actually, I think when I, when I bought my skates there, I think that Brooke Howard Smith was even working there. Like the California. I didn't know that Brooke Howard Smith worked in Amsterdam. That's a new one. How old were he, you back he, then? I was 16, turning 17. And he was, uh, I think he stayed in Amsterdam for like a year or two. I'm not quite sure. And uh, of course, you had like uh, uh, Mark and Vera, because for people that know all cool brands, you know, 976. Mm -hmm. That was Mark Heineken, who's like a co-founder co of Senate. His wife. And uh, she started 976 clothing or laundrings, 976 laundrings to be totally mm -hmm. precise. And uh, like the Senate team was pretty cool, but 976 team was also like full with stylish skaters. And I think some of the clothes of 976 were much cooler maybe even than Senate to me as being like not like really young anymore, like seven. Yeah, yeah, without all that eight and all the that want to shine somehow that Senate ad, right? Which I used exactly. to love back then. I was younger, so I used yeah. to love Senate so much. Of course, we all did because you know, especially when we found out that people were kind of hating on rollerblading, you wanted to have like a, the rebellious side. Yeah. But uh, so yeah, we knew Mark and 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 Vera from the start, and uh, I even I even made some drawings in one of Brooke Howard Smith's. Uh, uh, black books uh, and coined a little phrase which later popped up with with uh, medium and which I still see people hashtagging now which is pretty funny <laughs> uh, and it's, uh, it's I don't know if you heard about it it's a soccer bladers roll no I never, I never it's heard. a soccer bladers roll you remember that Roaches had the shirts that said rollerbladers suck mm -hmm. and I remember in Amsterdam all of the skateboarders were wearing the Roaches shirts, even though it was an, an inline brand, because they thought, yeah, rollerbladers suck. And obviously, the, and they were supporting the skating industry. That's awesome. <laughs> and obviously, the, the the that was like a dig from from Roaches to Rollerblade, um, and then I just switched it up and made Sucker Bladers roll out of it, and it kind of took on a life from there. But it was it was pretty funny because we were unable to get Rollerblade uh, in the north of of of, of uh, of Holland or actually there was one place in the south of Holland where like a few guys had them like Randy Abels and, and Sven Boekhorst mm -hmm. those guys they, they they had them in the beginning and uh, for us it was just impossible to find so but we all were like it was Amsterdam was totally a roaches city so yeah. uh, I, yeah, I that's, remember that's kind like, of the start I don't know which Oaks was it was it Oaks 3 yeah Oaks 3 where yeah Oaks 3 uh, that they they had a, a part in Amsterdam with Tom Alquist. I think that was it, huh? If I'm not wrong, I might be mistaken. No, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Tom Alquist also a, a good friend from back in the day. We, we which knew, still we skates? Knew... Tom Alquist still skates, huh? Ah, uh, he's probably from the old guys. Uh, I I think he probably can still give John Julio a run for his money uh, in, in his blading. <laughs> yeah, because from I what I've Tom... seen. Yeah, in the ball at Tom least, is, amazing. Hundred percent. Yeah, Tom is, I think, maybe a little bit older than I am, mm -hmm. or about the same. So let, let's let. If you would play a game of playing with time. Tom Marquis, who would win? <laughs> oh, Tom. Well, that kind of depends who 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 gets to start or which uh, ball, maybe. Yes, because but... you're you're amazing, still, man. It's weird to see you skating. Like when I see you skating in a ball, for for people listening to this and. I mean, wanting or not, you, there's some names in skateboarding that you will always know. Something like Steve Caballero, you will always know Steve Caballero. So when I look at you skating, I would think of Steve Caballero on inline <laughs> skates. It's just like that control. It doesn't matter. Like, I think you're going to be 60 and you're going to have the same amount of control. Doing airs like perfectly grabbed and like everything just 
on point. So that would be sick to see a game of you and Tom. Because Tom was always like, yeah, he could do clean tricks from what I used to see, but it was more like that. I would compare him to nowadays something like more like Joe Atkinson a few years ago, like Matthew Weinemann, like that freestyle. I don't know, just I yeah, don't know, like different. I don't know how to yeah. explain. Yeah, yeah, totally. But it's such a great style, though. I know, I, used to, I love it. I'm I'm not saying good or bad. It's just different. We need different. We don't need everyone to be the same. So uh, Tom was like a a, a very uh, a big example of. Uh, of how uh, European bladers could also have that kind of pro shine yeah. and status for us. Because I remember like a lot of the, the greatest skaters from Europe in the 90s, they came from roller skating, obviously. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Toto. Toto, Toto Gali. Yeah, Rene. Like Toto is, Toto is one of my all-time huge inspirations. And like he's, he's also the guy who came – the guys from Marseille, they always came to Amsterdam and us Amsterdam guys, we would go to Marseille because they would sleep on our floors, we'd sleep on their floors and uh, <laughs> there would be a lot of a lot of you know, smoking and a lot of skating. And uh, <laughs> Toto is actually one of the first guys to like open a door in my mind because before when we started skating halfpipe, it was all about, you know, even before we would really start grinding, we would do airs. Just airs, airs, and hand plants, but straight airs up and down, and trying to go as high as you can, because <laughs> that was like the only thing, right? Yeah. And he, and then he came up, and I, he was actually still skating uh, on Roller quads skates. then, mm -hmm. and uh, he told me, "Hey, what you need to do is you need to go alley oop, and you need to go round. Like I can see you have nice high airs, this is cool, but if you go round and keep going, you'll eventually be able to travel." Like from left to right or right to left, going. Yeah, and but back back then the ramps used to be also stuff. a lot thinner, right? The ramps used to be like really yeah. really thin. So, but the ramp I grew up skating wasn't because it's that that ramp is like you said it's also in the hoax three and is that actually, the vert ramp that that it's still there or it was still there until like last year I think no. Alex Burster skated. Is that the one? No, no, no. It's a totally different one. No, it was it had a wood frame. That was actually a ramp. Um, it's a funny story. Ramp I learned to skate on, and for instance, I think that Mark Heineken learned to skate on that ramp, and many like everybody from Holland that was anybody in a half pipe learned to properly skate that thing. That ramp was so old that the transitions uh, were from like one of the first half pipes in Holland, and uh, that ramp uh, half pipe was so old that it didn't have a flat. You remember the, the half pipe? I remember like the, that, the, the pipe. That, that didn't have a flat <laughs> yeah, and I also didn't have a platform. Yeah. So there were no lip tricks. You couldn't stand on top. And no, nobody would do drop ins. You would just go on the bottom and then mm -hmm. skate up. Because we, obviously, in Holland, we didn't have any balls and stuff, uh, pools. Um, and they took that transition and then they brought it to a Powell, like a, a Powell Peraltas, like an old school uh, skateboard brand. They had uh, like a, one of the first indoor skate parks, which wasn't really even a skate park. It was a place where they built a half pipe and it was that half pipe. And then after a while, they brought that half pipe to the museum square and uh, it was pretty, pretty wide, but there were always holes in it. So you would tend to skate. You would need to avoid like, them. <laughs> yeah, back and forth on the left side, back and forth in the middle, back and forth on the right side. But then Toto was like, no. Oh, you know where all the holes are. You skate this ramp every day. So from that on, it like it opened the door in my head, and uh, and that also gave way to being able to carve ramps and to do grinds with speed. And mm. from then, I remember like the first time I ever skated the bowl. After that was obviously in Marseille because there weren't many bowls or skate parks at all. And it's not just that. that I think you tell me if I'm wrong, but guys in Amsterdam would be a lot harder to be like a winter skater. Nowadays you have indoor skate parks, but back then you were more like a spring summer skater while in Marcel they would have like the park the whole year with good weather. You would have like a lot exactly. of colder weather, snow and all uh, that. But can you imagine for a guy like uh, what you said, Tom Alquist from fucking uh, Copenhagen? It was <laughs> even didn't. worse. Even I know. worse for him. <laughs> but like you know we what? had to contend with rain, but he had like ice. <laughs> yeah. And but, uh, I don't know if yeah. you ever felt like this, but you know, like when you, 
when you get injured or you have less time to skate, you end up enjoying it in a different way. So with me, this happened before. Like when I get injured, I thought so much about what I wanted to do that when I got back to skate, to my skates, I would get injured again right away because I wasn't prepared yet and I would try Too to greedy. push. Yes. Or I would actually learn a lot of new stuff because I actually thought about it, you know. But I, I've seen like... It's happening. I think it happens a lot. Places where you, you can't skate less times, your sessions are like more concentrated and you end up like progressing more. I don't know. I don't really care about it anymore nowadays, but there was times that I wanted to get better. <laughs> so Well, you remember when you got to like the daily bread and, and uh, especially like the first uh, 10, 15 daily breads, um, there would be a new trick in a new daily bread. You yes. would get the new daily bread. There would be something new. You'd be like, yes, what? exactly. And, and you'd have. <laughs> and if there was ice if in the canals in Amsterdam, we weren't going to be able to skate. But this is also the thing because people, you know, uh, tend to think, oh, he's skating balls, he's skating half pipes and mini ramps. He's like a he's a ramp skater because you know, back in the day, you had qualification. <laughs> this guy. He's a street skater, but he only does rails. This guy, he only does curbs. This guy only does gaps because it used to be like that a little bit. But since we couldn't skate ramps all winter uh, and we couldn't skate ramps at night, I'd always been also a street skater. Uh, it was just the thing that uh, once I started getting a little bit better, um, when you skate ramps and are able to do the big airs and the big grinds and the big stuff, it's um, it's much more of an eye catcher because well remember that when we started skating street we would do two three meter grinds and that would be a good grind of course <laughs> and we would we would tap tap a rail with the backslide which is like a meter and a half that were like <laughs> legit tricks but at the same time you had a, a big half pipe where people were doing layback backflips of two and a half meters high so the progression was a bit skewed. Because people had been skating ramps much longer than they'd been riding uh, uh, rails. Mm. Uh, because just like the, the, I saw a clip the other day, and I think probably you saw it on, on uh, Facebook as well. I think it, it was the mushroom blading guys that posted it about this guy, the first roller skater who was skating in a spider style, who started doing 540s in oh, yeah, bowls. McTwist and all that stuff, yeah. Of yeah, course. and that the skateboarders saw that and thought, well, how is that possible? We need to start trying that. And the same with the you know, inverts. The, the guy yeah. that invented, one of the first guys to do inverts, he still does them. Duke. Yeah, he's, well, I just, saw, I just right yeah. before starting recording this, I just saw a clip of him on, on Facebook. So <laughs> he yeah. still skates, which is amazing. Yeah, that's fucking amazing. <laughs> but yeah, to get back to the fucking winter skating, that was just we would skate street and uh what you said it's if you want to go out and uh, you know people that ride ramps know this especially half pipes when it gets really cold the ramp gets really really slow and when you fall it hurts very very much same thing on street hurts a lot but still if you can if you warm up on a street session and that after and you start getting warm it's a lot better to do than to skate a big fat half pipe. Also, you know, when we would skate, we would be wearing the helmets and the knee pads and all that shit. Okay, we I... would if we skate the half pipe. So that was like a big difference to us as well. We would just wear like the jogging pants and then we'd have the, the Senate ultra wides over that. <laughs> the big hoodie. Like the pajama. Yeah. <laughs> you would get the Yeah, pyjama. exactly. <laughs> it, it was kind of like wearing crash pads a little bit. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it was a it was a bit tougher, and that's what I say when we started going to. Oh, Wait, I'm gonna need to. Get, oh, no, I'm shit. just gonna need to interrupt you for a second, just because of my baby, yeah. and I'm gonna come back in thirty seconds. Give me a second, okay? Give me a of second. Course. I'll come back. Yeah. Yeah, and dad life, and all about it.
Okay, so I'm back. <laughs> Good. You there, Remy? I am here. I am okay, here. So my baby's my baby's sick. He's coughing and all that. So just had to go ah, check yeah. if everything is okay. It's all good. It's winter coming here. Summer is coming for you. Winter is coming here. How's the winter in South Africa? Very cold or not? Uh, not Cape Town. Like, you know what? I would compare Cape Town to to Lisbon in Portugal, which is, yeah, for people living here, it's cold, you know. But for yeah. for you guys, it's like it's summer all year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like when we go to Barcelona in January, you see all the Barcelona skaters complain, "No, it's too cold to skate." We're like, "What? Fuck out of here!" <laughs> okay, so I got one more question. No, not one more, a few more, but like, um, so you would think, like, after what you just said, I would say that if it wasn't for hip hop you would start skating because you were really deep into the hip hop scene, right? Graffiti and basketball and were you into break too? I don't know. And was that the uh, main connection yeah. between you guys and the guys from Marcel or how, do you think you would be skating if it wasn't for hip hop? No, no, no. I would probably, uh, well, I, I would probably be leading a, a, a much more boring life than I am now, and I would probably be. Uh, I, I might have done something with uh, with playing football or soccer, as the Americans call it, because <laughs> I, I, I could I could kick a ball like everybody in Europe. We can kick a ball, but um, that was like one of my passions, which I had to stop when I was fifteen because I had some growing pains in my knees and stuff. And when I got back after the injury, I uh, found that most of my friends had quit the team. So I was like, mm, yeah, I didn't. And also, you know, when you play football, say up to like 14, 15, it's fun. And then once you start getting in like the B and the A class, like with a little bit older guys, everybody's that much more focused on, 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 yeah, on there's trying to win. win. Yeah. And then it's nothing else yeah. other than football, right? Yeah, and to, and to me it was just like, and I was already since when I was quite young, because like if people that know about graffiti know that Amsterdam has uh, had like a, a healthy uh, growing place for graffiti since like the beginning of the eighties, and I lived, I, which was like every bridge in there, everything was covered in graffiti always, and I would I. I I, I was seeing that from when I was really young, so we I would just we would cycle on our BMX in in, in the Vondel Park and we'd see these guys. So obviously you get inspired and start scribbling, and then yeah, hip hop came into play, um, and yeah, it still for, is. for us like <laughs> it's it's a big part of my life still, and uh, definitely the hip hop led to the graffiti, like you know the the, the four or five elements as some people say. Um, because I always thought that's like a real thing, you know. Um, it's a real, it's a real culture. Um, and also, I think about blading; it's a real culture, a little bit younger, but very real. But then, when I was getting a lot better at graffiti and going out every night, bombing and doing pieces, um, I was having a lot of fun. But then, the graffiti world. It was. It's also like a lot of hate and a lot of anger and a lot of people crossing each other out. And you know, I I, I got into fights and I started fights and it was just not a positive place to be really. And once I started in rollerblading, you you know you could have like a session, and say for instance, uh, you and me have a session with Joe Atkinson. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we can skate, but Joe Atkinson makes us look like pussies. <laughs> but but the great thing is. The great thing is we could all three skate a place and we would all three be happy and no one would really lose. Obviously, Joe would do the best tricks, but we would do some cool tricks and we would be very happy. We would get props and give props. And yeah. really In hip hop, I would see that happening in breakdance, something like that. In breakdance, that happens, no? Not like in a battle, but like when really the crew... Not so much. Yeah, with graffiti, it's very much a thing that, okay... This is like the top spot in Amsterdam. Everybody wants to be there and you could go there and, and like paint a burner and people would be fucking jealous and they would just cross it out. <laughs> and even anonymous and you'd be like, oh man, you fucking, 
you know, <laughs> you, you 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 went to so many shops to steal all that paint to do <laughs> wait, this wait, piece. Wait, 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 then... wait, 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 wait. Where did you steal the paint? <laughs> well, this is one of the things, you know. If you, uh, you know, in cultures there, we have things that we think are true. You know, you have to be true to the game, kind of do this stuff in a way. And I, I must say, I, <laughs> well, not really, but in graffiti, like it's one of the, it's not a rule per se, but especially, I don't know how it is nowadays because I still know a lot of writers, but I'm not really in that world anymore. But back in the, like in the 80s, 90s, uh, you were considered like a bit of a bitch if you, if you bought your paint. <laughs> you, you know, like one of the things about about graffiti is it's all illegal uh if you buy your paint and you go to places where it's allowed to paint then you're not a graffiti artist then you're just someone painting on something Dude, and graffiti i'm happy was... that skating is not like that imagine no, like going to my shop and steal the wheels <laughs> uh, uh, no oh no. uh, <laughs> this is the thing and when i turned 18 i thought you know just it's not for me anymore and it kind of coincided with me becoming better at blading and seeing what a like a, a brotherhood blading is and how fucking cutthroat graffiti world was or is uh, because there's also a thing with graffiti if you really want to do it well then you're going to get caught eventually it's going to cost you time and money and problems and especially when you're really young you, you're going to be afraid because your parents kick your ass um, whereas in skating obviously we have to put in work as well and you're going to get hurt You know, any anybody that's anything in blading has gotten like numerous horrible injuries. But this is kind of the thing, you know. It's actually, if you look at it like, you know, I'm 41 and I have some time to look back. People that do basketball or baseball or football, soccer, whatever you want to call it, everybody has stupid injuries. Yeah, but it's part of it. Man. You, is, you have injuries just crossing yeah. the road, man. I, I keep saying this. I say the same to everyone. A lot of times, people ask me, "But is it dangerous?" And I ask them, like, how many people die every day just crossing the road? It's, man. It's exactly. It's everything. It's subjective, you know. There's people are different. Situations are different. So it, you can't really judge it by having a pair of skates or by having wheels under your feet. It's just. It is what it is. <laughs> no, your limits. Live to skate another day as 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 like one of the rollerblade mod, and um, well, to 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 wrap graffiti thing up. It's I really love the scene and I love the 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 whole culture, but it's just uh, a lot of it is very negative, and if you don't have anything to compare it with, and that's your scene, then you're just in the middle of it. But if you do have something to compare it with, like rollerblading. Which especially, you know, when I got kind of out of graffiti, we're talking about 97, 98. That was also when I was getting sponsored by the, the boot companies and getting flown to do shows everywhere and or everywhere to some places. And, and being able to actually make a living off of blading. Well, then you can see that all right, there's this big positive thing in my life here. And there's another thing which I do really enjoy as well. But it's not positive. It's just not uh you know and i i still enjoy seeing graffiti but then again i still also enjoy more to see a big fat piece on a train than to see it on some mu mural place where it's allowed i'm like all right there's two different things it's like doing uh uh say for instance the kelsos like they're killers on p rails mm -hmm. but you don't And obviously, maybe it's a bad example because they both have skated crazy drop rails as yeah, well. But it's they like they can skate everything. But I, I think I know what you like, mean. Like, like let's let's take us for example. We can skate, do lots of shit on a P rail, but we don't want to go and bring it to a drop rail anymore. This mm -hmm. is like the difference in graffiti yeah. as well. You, uh, big risk, big reward, the, and it's the same in graffiti. But enough about that. <laughs> let's keep going with skating. You said that in like. About ninety eight, ninety seven, you started skating for a boot company. I need to, I need to, um, to correct you in there. It back then it wasn't a skate a boot company. Back then it was a, a skate company because uh, yeah, there was no exactly. UFS. <laughs> yes, yes, you're right. There was What a, company was that? The, uh, I started skating for uh, Roaches. That mm -hmm. was a uh, team Roaches Holland. That was the 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 the, the, the my, my, and uh 
yeah, I was very fortunate. And, you know, it's like um, a lot of nepotism, just like nowadays. Uh, only there was a little bit more of the cake to be shared uh, compared to now. But mm -hmm. I could skate. Uh, I could skate demos and shows and stuff. And I was good friends with the guys that were in Team Roaches. Okay. And, uh, but I must say, by this time, I, I, for instance, I'd already been in Daily Bread, so people have already noticed that I could do a trick. Uh, but um, there, was a, there was a thing, I think it was maybe 96 or 97, there was like the Dutch Championships, and uh, Jose Malin, a uh, long-time friend of mine, and also like the same generation as, uh, as Toto and, and Rene Hogwin and those guys. Um, mm -hmm. He was the team manager of Roaches at the time, and we would skate and smoke and party together a lot. And um, my friends that were on Roaches said, hey, can Remy come on the team? He's like, no, no, he's like, uh, he was keeping, kind of keeping me away a little bit, or maybe he just didn't want to push up too quick, you know, like, earn it first mm -hmm. which is totally fine and then he said yeah if you uh do the dutch championships vert uh you need to play top three and uh then uh, they put you on to uh, get, get yeah and uh, I, I skated and back then there were like really a lot of good halfpipe skaters in holland and i was definitely not in the top three of holland at that time definitely not <laughs> i could do some nice lip tricks and stuff and i had some nice airs but there were guys doing 720 twist back to back with 720s 540 switch stuff i couldn't touch it at all i just had a nice style and good lip tricks and went high so then i was skating there and i skated my heart out and i think i was sixth or something and i was pretty happy because the year before i was like 15 uh and then there was this guy, I think his name was Jacques, and he had, uh, I think, Zero Gravity Skate Shop, and it was all the way in Maastricht. And obviously nobody knows about Dutch topography, but you have Amsterdam, which is kind of in the middle, and then you have them, the deepest down in, the, in the, the south is Maastricht, so very, very far away from me, and I would never be there. He said, yeah, come skate for my shop. And they had a, a, a clothing brand called Hangers as well, which was pretty cool at the time. He said, I'll hook you up with this and that. And I was really Angers, happy. Was like, that the oh, brand yeah. that made the shoes, Hangers? Hangers. I think they also did, yes. They made the shoes and with Mad Men's, wasn't it? Yes, they did. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was actually no, it was pretty cool. No, wasn't that Arbinger or Hangers? I don't know. Maybe I'm saying it wrong. I'm sorry, man. I don't know. Maybe it I'm... was. Uh, I'm not uh, fucking. We're talking. Okay. So we're whoever talking listened to this, 21 years ago. Us. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then uh, I was really happy, and I told the guys, and they went to Jose. He's like, hey, uh, Remy's being picked up by uh, Jacques from Zero Gravity. And I was like, free skate, free clothing, let's have it. And then <laughs> Jose swooped in. He said, yeah, no, no, I was just joking. I just wanted to see how you did. Yeah, yeah, you're on, you're on the team. You're on the team. And I was like, ah, you motherfucker. <laughs> but so that was uh, one of my happy, happier moments uh, in the 90s uh, for, for getting started. How many people were in the uh, team, in the Roches team, in the Oland Roches team? At that moment, I would think some somewhere like five or six. Okay. Would any of you guys would get paid or you end up being on Roches Europe or something like that? No, no, I don't Just think skates. anybody got paid. We got skates. But the thing was with Roaches, if you'd skate for them, uh, you would actually not just skate for Roaches, but you would skate for the importer of Roaches. Yeah, so it was Time also, Zone, Hyper. Exactly. Senate, 976, Rise Above, Cosmo, uh, Hyper, every everything you could think of, except for Rollerblade, mm -hmm. uh, they imported, and that meant you would get those things as well. So you would you would skate for roaches, but you'd get all that stuff. It was ridiculous at the time. Like every uh, every three months, we'd go there, and you'd go there with nothing and leave with two full bags worth of stuff. And this was also the time where you would where you would have street skates and vert skates. <laughs> so you would have like... Like the, the aluminum you, frame and the plastic frame. Exactly. You would have at least eight pairs of skates a year, uh, wow. which came, obviously, we threw out the stock wheels and put Cosmos on every one of them. Because they were... <laughs> Can you well, imagine like, that now? Free. Do you know the price of the Cosmo wheels now? Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, exactly. It's ridiculous. But um, yeah, that was that was like a great, great times, and I think Rome grew also from there because uh, we we had like uh, uh, Randy Abels mm -hmm. who also came on the team, which is still amazing. <laughs> Oh yeah, Randy's one of the 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 greatest uh, old old bladers in the world for sure. People, what, he's like thirty six now or something. But I don't know. I know that he's seriously amazing. <laughs> yeah, man, he still kills it. He's, he, he skates. He only skates for fun nowadays. He doesn't do big rails and stuff. Doesn't matter. But he can just if he finds one, he can just hop on and and and, and sit on the sit and on surf it. it. <laughs> exactly. I, he's one of the guys I skate with the most, I think. And tell but, me. But uh, yeah, Roaches was a fucking amazing time. And when did Rollerblade, you said that Rollerblade back then wasn't really in the country, but there was, maybe I'm doing like a, a really big jump, but there was a time that Rollerblade got in because from what I see, from what I saw, like some of the best skaters, or at least the maybe the two most known skaters ever in Holland, they both skated for Rollerblade. One of them still skates for Rollerblade. The other one, sadly, is not with us anymore. But exactly, yeah. This, this was. Um, you can just uh, say the names for those of, like, for those people listening to this. Oh, the, we're we're talking about Edwin Viering and Sven Buchhorst, of course. Mm -hmm. I think two of the most well known and probably one few of the best bladers in in Holland. In the uh, world, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, in the world as well. Um, to, for for me, the 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 skating for Roaches was like. I think I skated for them for like three years or something. Um, and after a while, they, they just had so many people on the team that <laughs> they, they, they had to start cutting people. And I was really uh, lucky because they, they had some amazing guys on there. Niels Janssen was like the first guy uh, to do a 900 forward in a half pipe, like one of my friends, Fyre Fyre Niels Janssen. Uh, Ty Chris used to hate him because he couldn't do that trick and, and Niels could and you had <laughs> Theo Earhart and uh, like uh, Tim Haars uh, famous fucking guys for in, in Holland at least mm -hmm. and they wanted to cut down the team a little bit and I could kind of see sorry I think there was a little cut I didn't hear what you said they wanted to cut some people from the team and I kind of saw that oh. but then I was in luck because you spoke about Rodolfo's before like the oldest skate shop in Europe the uh, the guy that was running it at the time was a BMX guy and he really liked me we had kind of the same attitude towards skating and BMXing and you know, go hard don't give a fuck style and, uh, he said you know what I hear they're cutting people why don't you come and skate for me for Rodolfo's and that was actually at the time when, um, it, and I must say in between this, I'd also skated shows for Solomon. I'd never skated for the brand directly, but we were skating a half pipe for money, which also they rented out to Solomon. And, they and just would, said, they, hey, would Solomon let you skate their shows with Rochi skates or you would need to skate with Solomon? No, no, no. I would have, I would have Solomon skates. Uh, <laughs> what would Rochi say about it? What I'm gonna say, because the thing is, uh, like the one week we would skate somewhere uh, with uh, the, the the same half pipe, but just the ramp one one set said Adidas and Salomon because that was back when Adidas and Salomon were still one, and the other was I think Roaches and some bank name or something, and uh, officially I was still skating for Roaches, but the shows were for Salomon, and I think the the thing was for this half pipe. Because this was just a guy who owned a half pipe who ran, kind of ran, and we were skating the ramp for him. And uh, if you say, for instance, you have a skate shop and you wanted to uh, to rent uh, the ramp with the guys, um, if you had the the the, the Roaches ramp, uh, part on it, then Roaches would pay like half. And if it was Adidas, then Adidas would pay half. And there were certain shops mm -hmm. who had deals with certain brands, so that's how that worked. But to get back, I was skating then for Rodolfo's, which I really wanted to, because um, at that time, Roaches had the fifth elements, and everybody loved them, and I hated them. 
because my backslides had gone because they yeah, were too they slippery. Were too fast, I had, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I fucking hated that. And I saw that Rollerblade had made the Dirks, the, the, the CI5s, and the Daytonas. Mm. And and Chris Edwards had always been like a big, big game. fan of everyone. Like we, everyone Club. was everyone in front of him. So he's a godfather, you know. Yeah. Perlo is like the the style man, but without Chris Edwards, where would we be? Um, so when I skated Rudolfos, I was able to pick whichever skate I wanted, and still could get all the other brands which I got through the, through the Axel. So that was like a, a happy marriage. And then after a while, Rudolfos. Uh, in the end, it was just. <sighs> me and three other guys who were skating for them and some skateboarders as well it was like a yes a it was like a also pretty famous was also in daily bread and did a lot of stuff with daily bread and mm -hmm. amnon klein I like a amnon, fil of filmmaker mm -hmm. of course amnon who made lomp and and lots of other cool stuff and rashid buzit was like the first dutch guy who got two pictures in in one daily bread one taken in holland and one taken in california it was like all right um Then that stopped. Uh, they weren't making enough money on the, the roof. And they had to let us go. So that was like the first time in years that I wasn't sponsored. Mm -hmm. um, and I was riding And you were the, skating the rollerblades, right? Yes, I was riding the rollerblades, uh, the deluxe at the time. I remember that they had this horrible bulge in the front, mm -hmm. like the plastics. It, it didn't look nice. I'd cut that off. <laughs> and a lot of people saw that and saw it looked very good and so they were biting my style and then i went to skate with uh i went with with tio uh to randy's house and from there we were supposed to go to like the the frankfurt uh, asa finals like in 19 and, and i remember that we we take we took the train me and tio took the train to randy's dad's house who lived all the way in the south of holland in flyman And we'd get there, and uh, Tio had brought like a bottle of whiskey, uh, and I had some hash. And we were smoking and drinking in the train. So when we got to Randy's place, we were totally hammered. <laughs> and we and and you must know that Randy at the time, I think, was probably 16, something like that, 16, 17. And um, we got there eventually. Tio, uh, my friend Tio, there he was. Uh, That they they had like a sunbed, you know the solar panel sunbed thing. I'm not sure if I'm saying it's the right thing. Yeah, I know, I know the what you mean. That, a tanning bed, mm -hmm. that's the one. And he went on the tanning bed, and of course he was really. So he went to the tanning fell bed, asleep. fell asleep, <laughs> fell asleep. The fucking guy. And then Randy's mom came in, like, hey, and he was obviously Tio being Tio. He was stripped totally naked. So we heard like a little. <laughs> ah! We're like, hey, what's going on? All right, we woke him up. The cue to the next morning. Uh, Randy's dad walked. Uh, he, he was like a security kind of guy for for a big company, and he had to wake up very early in the morning. Uh, Rudy Abels, uh, and he banged on our doors like, "Hey, hey, guys! Uh, weren't you guys supposed to catch the train at seven o'clock?" And uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's seven o'clock now. Like, oh fuck! <laughs> and the he he put us in his car. He drove us all the way. I think a hundred kilometers further to catch the train, to get the same train, he, he drove that fast that we would be able to jump in that train because back in the days, it was like if you had a train ticket, it would be for that train. And you mm -hmm. couldn't take the next one, you'd have to buy a new one. And gladly well, the trains weren't that fast. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Uh, so we ended up going to uh, Frankfurt and there, were like a, there was like a big, big Dutch and French enclave there. Loads of uh, Americans there. I think uh, John Julio was there. Uh, Canadians like John Bergeron and Azikwe and that was like the only contest in my life ever where I skated all the runs flawlessly it was ridiculous <laughs> it, you know if you skate you know that this just doesn't happen yes it's it's, it's, it's a impossible. once in a lifetime I know what you mean it's like one and, of those days. Um, yeah so the, like a perfect half pipe there and they had a great street course uh, and I was qualified to skate on both uh, but I also saw Like the, the the guys that were on, like I would have to compete with Bruno Lua and like the big American names. So yeah, I'm never ever going to beat any of these guys on the street. 
So I thought, fuck it, I'm just going to concentrate on this half pipe thing. And also there I had to skate against Manuel Beliris, uh, Benny Huber, and like <laughs> really, <laughs> really best. ridiculous guys. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, But I thought, fuck it, I'll just skate. In the, in the end, I didn't. I, I think I placed sixth. But uh, Sami Raiman was there. And for those who know, uh, Sami Raiman is like you, is like a real wheel addict. Uh, and he's like uh, been in it for more than 20 or maybe 30 years now. I don't even know. And um, he saw me skating, apparently. And, uh, well, this was like the one contest where I, you know, Skate like I don't perfect. know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how because we were drinking and smoking a lot and partying with everybody. But I just had, uh, I, you know, sometimes in half pipe skating, you can just think of a run and link it perfectly, you know, with say, doing a fakie bio and then going to from fakie to fakie instant top soul, going back to fakies, you know, exactly linked out. I had no stalls in there, uh, you know, everywhere, like the extension, hand plants and all the right kind of ingredients. Mm -hmm. And I was just practicing that run like a lot of the time and just then skating streets, skating the all ridiculously wide mini ramp there. And uh, got in, I got into a fight with fucking Mike Budnick uh, <laughs> because he's... Because he snaked me if I would get in a fight with this guy now, because I don't know if people know, but he's like an MMA wrestler. So I'm like, hey, <laughs> I would stay away from that guy. But uh, then in the end, uh, Sami, uh, he, he, he came up to me and he gave me his card. And I didn't know who the fuck he was. I'm like, who the fuck are you? He said, yeah, so he skate, he skate very nice, this and that, blah, blah, blah. And I was, of, co of course, already friends with Randy and Sven, who were skating for Rollerblade at the time. And he said, yeah, here's my card. When you get home, call uh, the Dutch Rollerblade uh, office and tell them I sent you. So I was like, yeah, all right, fine, why not? Got back home, forgot all about it. Then two weeks later, I thought, ah, oh, my skates are a bit fucked. And then Randy was like, hey, man, why don't you call uh, Pepijn, who was like the, the, the head of the Rollerblade Holland at the time, and just called him. I said, yeah, I got this card from this guy. I don't know. He's called Sami Raiman. And... He said to give you a call. He said, oh, Sami sent you. Oh, well, then come by. And I thought, okay, I'm going to come by and maybe talk to these guys about something. And then I came by and he like had a big box with skates and stuff and everything. Like, yeah, here you go. Like, oh, what? Yeah, yeah, you're riding for Rollerblade now. I'm like, oh, all right. That's how it goes. <laughs> no contract. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I like once. But you know how those things are, and uh, no, I, I, I know, and I work skates. with it. <laughs> I still do, and there's yeah. some people that still expect that thing. Some people don't, and it's just I, I guess it's like depending where you are, you see things differently. I guess that's the thing. Yeah, because for me, you know, at the time I was I was already working and stuff, so I could I was you know I was totally ready to go start buying skates myself. But fortunately, most life i never had to uh, resort to uh, putting money in in, in rollerbladers pockets are you crazy <laughs> it's like uh, all the all the pro skaters that never buy any skates they uh, that well they we, we did other things because i did so many fucking shows of course across europe i got so many people interested in blading or i probably not me but the other guys and i would just be be the nice guy to talk to them and do promise and uh <laughs> see, 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 see about uh, here's some old wheels. Put them on your fitness skates and take the middle wheels out. Start grinding right now. And, and tell yeah, me, so you said that you were already working back then. What were yes. you doing? Because right now you're like full time in video, right? What That's were you doing right. before getting into video, and how did you got into video? Um, well, uh, what I was doing, I. The, the thing is, when I uh, when I finished my middle school, um, I was uh, well. They told me I was smart enough to go to university or something. But I was, I grew up pretty poor, and uh, I looked at how much money I, it would cost me to go and do that stuff. And I was already living by myself. And then, of course, I, I was starting to make money uh, doing halfpipe shows. So we I, we would make enough money in the summer to last all through the winter. So I thought, yeah, fuck school <laughs> <laughs> and fuck work. Um, uh, excuse me, can I say those kinds of words here? Of course, man. Uh, say whatever you want, man. <laughs> it's perfect. your thing. Um, yeah, it's late at night, right? Um, <laughs> no, no, no small children listening. But uh, actually, so so I didn't really get a good education 
at all, which was a bit silly in retrospect, uh, because especially back then, Holland, you could go, you know, you would you would get, could get loans for people to go to school. I didn't know all that stuff, so I was like, all right. And then uh, Rodolfo's, the, the the where what I said, what I skated for, I got a little job there, uh, and that kind of got me into retail, which okay. then led to uh, uh, another job in retail. And then I did uh, skate lessons for about a year and a half. Mm-hmm. Then I uh, then I injured my shoulder really bad. I dislocated it, had to have it fixed and everything. So since I was actually a skate teacher, which was like my employment at the time, I, I was able to get everything fixed with insurance and got my disability payments. And then when I got back from that, like later, it took, took like a good two and a half years to, to, to recover. Um, I, how did you, wait, 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 how did you got injured? Was it that like was it working? Was it like a really fat person that no, you were teaching or something like that? Or? No, no, it wasn't. The thing is, I I got injured just street skating. Okay, but you could just, put it through the insurance because you were you could say that you were practicing to get better. What you exactly, yeah. exactly, something like that. Or even in Holland, you didn't even have to lie about it. You could just say, "Yeah, I was a stupid idiot." I, That's not I, lying. I, you're I, getting I, better I, to be yeah. able to teach. <laughs> true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, uh, doing grinds on handrails like uh, I'm not sure what you uh, what you want to teach these kids. But then, all in all, after that, I uh, I uh, I had to get a job again, and I was already like 23 or 24 at the time. So I uh, got into what I knew. I, I did retail at Rodolfo's, uh, so I went to work for a little shoe shop because you know people that know me know I'm quite. Uh, Quite uh, like you were the wheel addict. Yeah, I'm the like, shoe, like I'm, the I'm, sneaker, I'm the addict. Sne- sneaker addict. And that's uh, what I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you if you were already there or if it just came with that job. Oh no, the the, the sneaker stuff that came from way, way, way before. I guess that comes end in end with with the A pop thing. Huh? That's right. <laughs> Graffiti yeah, writers yeah, love shoes. There, that's right. There was a there was a, a running store just around the corner from my house, and like I said, I grew, grew up with the money so you would fucking be window shopping always and then i saw the i'm, I'm really old f41 i saw the nike air max come out when it came out and um i saw that thing and you could see through you had they had the window and they looked just much nicer than anything that'd been out then and i was <laughs> Don't like tell oh, me you fuck. Steal them. <laughs> no 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 never stole any shoes in my life but uh that was strictly paint but um i remember saving up for those things like uh three quarters of a year until i got my birthday and got some extra money went to the store and obviously they didn't have my size anymore because three and a half (laughs) year later or like it was like seven months later but then they had the air max light so i bought that and that was like really the start of me being a sneakerhead so Skip fast forward to when I was 24. I started working in like a mom and pop's sneaker shop, which was cool because I worked there by myself and uh, we'd had a D- we had a DVD player and it was right around the corner from Skate Zone Skate Shop. So you would play skate so, videos all day. <laughs> yeah, well, not even videos, but the D- yeah, exactly. The DVDs was already the thing then. And uh, this was... And also that internet was starting to grow and we'd had like a Dutch skate forum. So everybody knew that if you're going to go there, buy your DVD, then afterwards you're going to go to Remy's shop to watch the DVD. And this was the thing. So I'd always have like people in the shop never buying shoes, but having a good time. <laughs> How long did it take you to get fired? <laughs> ah, I, I actually, I didn't get fired. The, the shop, uh, they, they did some really stupid investments uh and they bought some really shitty i was like oh man how the fuck are you gonna ever be able to sell that crap and then uh because they first had like five shops then it went to four three and then when they had two shops it was like the writing was on the wall and once i started getting problems with payments because i saw like hey guys yeah hey i was supposed to get paid guys where's my money yeah 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 next week and then you'd get half in cash and half they're like fuck that so I went to look for another job, and then I started working at Nike. Mm-hmm. And then from Nike, I started from yeah, just being like a floor manager to like a stockroom coach to being the assistant manager to having my own shop. But Wait, stop everything. How many shoes do you have? Uh, I don't know. 
Okay, keep going. <laughs> Just... um, yeah, Le- less than three hundred. Okay. Okay. So that could be anywhere between two and three hundred, but less than three hundred, more than two pairs, right? Yes. <laughs> not, not left and right. <laughs> no, no pairs, boxes. But uh, yeah, the working for Nike that was like a thing, and actually, while I was working for Nike, was when I started making some decent money. I um, I bought a little camera, like you do, you know, because I had my friend Amnon. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he was always a pain in the ass to film with because he, he would film stuff and then you'd get new a new pair of skates and he'd say, yeah, yeah, you have to do that trick again. Why? Yeah, you've got new skates and I'm not going to put any old footage in the video. I'm like, mother. <laughs> he was really... Amnon was the best. <laughs> he, he, he's still he in the video a, thing, huh? the video industry. Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I work with him sometimes. Mm. But he was like a bastard and I was like, fuck. And he said, Hey man, nowadays you're only skating balls because that was right when the Marnix Bowl in Amsterdam uh, was made. And we're like, yeah, fuck yeah, fuck street skating. We've got this thing. And he said, no man, skate drop rails, big hammers, fuck the ball. I don't feel like, oh, ball. Yeah? <laughs> I can imagine him saying yeah. that. I love him. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, okay, fuck you. I'm going to buy my own little camera. So, And this is like the start because of just being a little bit pissed off. I thought, fuck it, you know what? I'll just buy a camera and start <laughs> filming myself. You know, fuck this shit. <laughs> And then from then on, you know, it went on. And even, you know, as my kind of career in sneaker world progressed a little bit, I started finding, like, as you do when you start filming your friends and having them film you, you know, that there's like a ton of filmmakers that came out of blading. And not just in Holland, everywhere that people are rollerblading, people are making videos, people are getting into it because obviously... Because of skating, it's, it's, just like me, like it, everyone else. Yeah. It's a it's a pretty cool profession if you can get it done, um, and then eventually, when I was still working at Nike, and this was even before I uh, before I had my own Nike shop, actually not my own, but my own to manage, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, I had done a I had done a course because I found that when I was you know I I had the computer, I had a better camera, and I found that there were just little things like lights and sound. Uh, you know, because as uh, us skaters, Obviously. we don't worry too much about anything but the image. You know, we want to have the space. <laughs> it needs to be fish eye really close. close and not to cut anything. <laughs> exactly. You know, and uh, and there was a long time where I didn't really want to learn stuff. But then when I did, I started figuring out, well, there's kind of a lot of stuff that I don't know. Mm-hmm. And this is also when I started filming other stuff than skating. Because... Literally, skating, filming skating is easy. Filming skating very well is very hard. Mm. But uh, you know, it I know exactly what in- you mean. I, I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not. I don't know it because I do film well. I'm not saying that, but like you know, Greg Fraser, and I love the way that he works, the way he films, and going out with Greg to film a trick or going out with me, it's <laughs> two completely different things. Yeah, exactly. So, but when you start to know a few things, the more you know the things you don't know. Uh, so I was lucky enough to uh, to uh, to do a little a, a course, and I'd saved up some money. And this was like one of the busiest years in my life because my 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 regular career was off sort of, and I was doing like a course, which was like one day of homework, one day sitting in 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 this school, and the other five days I was I was uh, managing the shop, sort of as an assistant manager and. Whoever, whoever's in retail knows that the assistant manager does the heavy lifting. Uh, <laughs> How and long this ago is like was that? The, I'm talking 2009 now, okay. I think. Okay, okay. And um, then, obviously, we'd already had like the crisis, which really hit home in 2010. And then the, the shop I was working, uh, I was managing, was in Schiphol, in the, 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 the Amsterdam airport. And the the rent there was ridiculous. It's like twenty five thousand euro a month. It's mm-hmm. like you need to sell a shit ton of Nikes to be able to to, pay. to yeah to pay and, rent, to pay you guys to to make profit. Everything. Exactly. And it was like a if you have a shop on on an airport, it's a fucker because it opens at seven o'clock in the morning and it closes at ten at night every day. And also that's, with that's there. If you're in in Dubai, you're open all day. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So it's it was pretty pretty fucked up, uh, and I, I did enjoy it, but it's really really hectic. 
like heavy, heavy years. Uh, also, because Schiphol is not very close by, you can't just jump on the bike and cycle there. You need to take either the car or a train. So that was a pain in the ass. Then after a while, they decided that their lease, their, their lease was up. And uh, then all of a sudden they said, yeah, we're not going to renew the lease. So, um, yeah, you guys uh, don't have a shop anymore. And a lot of the, the guys that were my staff, they could go and work in other shops. But when you're a manager, you're not going to put two managers in one shop. So they, they, they were kind of stuck with me. And I told them, well, you know, you want to get rid of me, just uh, fire me and give me some money. And I'm, I'm gone, you know, no problem. Obviously, they didn't want to do that. Um, and it was like in the, the height of the crisis. So I was like, oh, fuck, what am I going to do? And they tried to fuck with me and put me in shops in Rotterdam, like you know, my favorite place. Uh, and it's far away. And so I was like, ah, oh, damn. So I eventually talked to people from the company. And uh, I got to speak to one guy, which was a, a nice guy who actually didn't have anything to do with the Nike part of the company, but a different one. And he said, yeah, well, I see that you've actually done quite well for yourself. Uh, because this is the thing, if you work for Nike, they keep tabs on everything. And the only people that can actually look into that are the managers. And since I became manager, I thought, yeah, I'm going to take all of my, everything I ever done, put it in like a little notebook, and that's that. So the guy said, you know what, take some time off, find another job. So I did, found an office job, which was boring as fuck. <laughs> I, I hated, I hated my life there. It was just like, you know, when you have a job where you're just fighting to stay awake, you're like literally <laughs> chewing on your tongue. To, to, to not fall asleep like oh man so obviously uh, I wasn't very good at that but the, the pay was nice uh, and uh, obviously they let me go but in Holland the way is if you get uh, if you get fired you, you get unemployment money if you uh, quit yourself you get nothing mm -hmm. so obviously for the Nike stuff I wasn't going to quit myself until I had something else then and then this also, the more the, the more the, you work with the company, the more they're gonna need to pay you. The longer you work with them, the more they're gonna need to pay you, right? Yeah, yeah the longer the longer they pay you, and and of course, uh, it's like seventy percent of your last earned money. Which for me, since I was making more money at the office job than I was doing at Nike, it wasn't too bad. And the 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 best part for me, which was really lucky, is I went to the people for the unemployment money and. Uh, uh, I sat there and uh, they were saying, yeah, okay, so you have this retail experience, blah, 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 why are you not working in retail anymore? I said, yeah, because it's mind-numbingly fucked up and I don't want to go there anymore. And and then this 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 woman said, I see that you have, uh, you have a little company that you've uh, written in on your chamber of commerce, which I'd had already since 2002 at the time because that was rewind a long way back. Uh, when I was fucked up with my shoulder injury, I had done some uh, contests for Red Bull back when Red Bull was still putting money into blading mm -hmm. with High Space. Mm -hmm. High Space is like the High Space is like the inventor of the real street contest. Like even before I'm YTA, this fucking guy. Um, we had done uh, a few contests, and the biggest one was High Rollers which was like uh, we, we'd invited everyone from the whole world with Takeshi and his father and Matt Lindenmuth and Sven was there. We had Chris Edwards as, as an announcer. And so it was like a, a million dollar contest it was ridiculous. Like the last time th that Red Bull actually put money in. But to get paid from them, I had to have uh, yes. a little a company. company. Mm -hmm. So so the woman at the unemployment agency said, I see that you have this company. And how many hours a week do you work on that? And I just lied because after 2004, I hadn't done anything with it. And I said, yeah, yeah, about 10 hours a week. And she said, oh, yeah, I see you not made any money. I said, no, no, writing concepts, you know, just off the cuff bullshit. I just thought, you know what, what's he going to know? And then she said, you know what, if you want, since you're working for 10 hours for yourself, can continue working for yourself 10 hours a week and have your full employment benefits I was like no shit <laughs> and that was like the moment for me I actually spoke to uh, one of my friends the other day about this actually my wife um, that was the moment for me because that meant that I would legally be able to work 
and get more money than just the the the, the money that I would get on the on dole. And that was for me the start to really uh, get my film business off the ground, because as anybody knows, well, you know, getting your first start in uh, any new kind of venture is really really hard. Yeah, after the first one just comes. Yeah, because I'd also just bought a house. Uh, you know, and I didn't know how I was going to fucking pay my next mortgage, but it was like a little bit of a help. And then from then I had like uh, 18 months. And after 18 months, I was able to say, uh, you know what, I'm not going to apply for any jobs anymore. I'm just going to stick with this filming stuff. And uh, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Were so, you married already back then? Or are I wasn't. you married? I am married. I've been married since 2013. Okay. That's awesome. So uh, and uh, yeah, have one 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 beautiful baby daughter. Well, not a baby anymore. She 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 would get mad if I tell babies because she's two now. She's two, so she <laughs> no, knows no. everything. No, yeah. man, you know how you, you see it's not a baby if you fly. You don't pay as a baby anymore. <laughs> I know because uh, I bought exactly. tickets. You know what? I bought tickets yesterday to Amsterdam. Oh yeah. Yeah, oh, I'm great. flying. I'm going to be in Europe, and the best ticket that I could. Find. I need to be in Germany in the end of May. And then I'm going to go to Portugal to see my family and for my family to see my baby with my wife too. So we're going to fly through Amsterdam. So my wife is going one week after me. So I'll be a week just surfing Europe. I don't really know what I'm going to be doing, but it's I'll, uh, uh, I'll you'll, talk you'll to you later. I don't fun. really know what I'm going to do, but I'll be around. <laughs> Well, as long as you bring your skates, you can. No, no, no I will for sure. That's why I'm going <laughs> for a week. Uh, it's, before, it's good so. to hear, man. Yeah, it's good to hear. I, I've, I, I just came up. So, you know, normally when you have a house, it doesn't just magically grow uh, an extra room. But I actually had uh, that happen to me, like last, <laughs> last, last uh, autumn. Because you know, I have this house. I bought it, and there's this many rooms, and I have my working room, and I used to have some people stay here. But you know how it is when you have a kid and a wife. No, you need your own You don't space. want to have a bunch. Yeah. Exactly. Because I've had many guys over, like any blader mm. who lives anywhere where people want to come, you're going to have friends that find you. But, um, yeah, my neighbor came up a while back and he said, you know what, Remy, there's actually an, uh, an extra room in your attic, which I used to use. And it's kind of like a room which is unclaimed. Um <laughs> And he just he just claimed it like already like 25 years ago, and he said, you know what, I'm not using it, and it was a bit dirty. So it's your totally friend isolated. gave you a room. That's amazing. It's not even my friend. Well, it's a fr it's a friend now. It's my neighbor. <laughs> uh, he takes care of my cats when I go, and he's like a cool old guy with a, like a hook for a hand. It's like Captain Hook in real life. <laughs> and he he just said, you know, I have the key. Go upstairs, and it was like. It was fucked up because it had to take everything out because it was really dirty. But when I did that after one day, I was just like, hey, this is like an extra room. For, so for me now, it's a place to paint and, and to, to, to build stuff. But also... Uh, the man um, cave. I, I, a little bit, yeah. No, my man cave. I, I have a man cave. This is man cave number two. <laughs> like my man cave is also like my where, where I'm sitting right now, my shoe my shoe and camera room where I work and have all my computer stuff. But uh, I actually, so I have an extra little room and you know, we might not, you might have to cut this out because I'm going to have a lot of extra friends wanting to visit. Okay, we, we cut this part. <laughs> cut this part because I've had, uh, I've had Justin over, Justin Isinger uh, from one and I've had Young Well over and I've known Young Wells for like literally 21 years. I know. And, it, uh, I know them. it's your favorite redhead, I know. <laughs> That's right. It's my favorite redhead in the wide world. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, he stayed here. And uh, normally I wouldn't be able to say, hey, you can come up. But the great thing is it's it's also outside of my my actual, my, my, my living space. So people, you know, they don't get woken up when, when my daughter Lily starts screaming at night or uh, when when there's other stuff happening, so it's a nice little room. So you're welcome to come. That's hey. awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. Now I'm gonna completely change the subject. We already like in 2013, 2014. We actually a few months ago when you got the room. Now I'm going back completely to Edwin. Ah, man. yes. Uh, not even going to the setup. Like I met Edwin for the first time in 2001. 
when I first went to San Diego, it was also my first time in San Diego. So we end the first time I've ever met. Um, Aren't you guys also in one video together? After that, yes, <laughs> but yeah, it was from the yeah, second yeah. my second trip to San Diego. Ah. He was also there in the four by four leading the blind. Yes. Okay. Yeah, but it was that was with Jan. That was the first time I met Jan. Probably no, second time I met Jan. The first time, but Edwin was like amazing. Like when I first met him, he was you know. When did you first notice how good it was? Because in 2001, like I just said, it was already seriously amazing. I think I think probably 98, something like that. We had a skate park in Zandvoort uh, in some videos also and uh, Hoax 3. And um, he, he knew me a long time before that, but... That's you know how it is when I'm not saying that I'm a good skater, but no, man, when you're, you're a little bit better guy, than the rest, normal. it's perfect. Exactly, normal. you're the sponsored guy. You don't know the young kids, but they do know you. But then all of a sudden, I saw this guy ripping up our our pool, which we were killing on a daily basis, and um, he was doing stuff like full speed alley oop top sole, 540 in. I was like, oh, in '98. <laughs> yeah, and that looked like the, sort of like a 450, so you go to forward. I know, and then no? forward again. And uh, then he came back, and he did alley top sole to 70 in the other way. I was like, motherfucker, you're doing switch alley top soles in 1998 with spins in? So th that kind of got my attention. And he could already do two top sale then. Obviously. Yeah, that was his thing. No one could do it. Like yeah. That. The first day no. I met him, he was doing it in a in a ledge in San Diego. That was, you know, when the ledges are not really square, it's kind of like slanted down. Oh, if you just try to mock you, the skateboard. Yeah. It's not really. It's just. It's just weird. It's like an angled ledge. Yeah. And it was skate. It's just weird because if you try to mock you, your foot will slide out. So if you try yeah. to topside, you you need to bend but like over bend and he was just doing two exactly. top toes, but like holding it like i never saw anyone doing yeah. that's when i first yeah he it. could the, the he could do true top soles as long as a normal person could soul grind on mizu or backside uh, <laughs> yeah 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 he just had um, he had real good mobility but he had such strong feet and legs and it's uh yeah it's a literally a one of a kind blader. I, uh, I, there are like a few people, for instance, say Alex Burston. His true top sole might be about as good as Edwin's or a bit better. But then there's other things that Alex doesn't have that Edwin did have, and also vice versa. But yeah, it's the same. But take... Tyron was also amazing, and he's still like Tyron's true yeah. top sole was like maybe he had a good teacher. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, no, yeah, yeah. They did skate together, but Tyron was... He's like, from Rotterdam. He was taught by other... No, no, he's from Amsterdam. Okay. Don't let him hear you say that. Okay, sorry, man. Uh, <laughs> Tyron, Tyron, I didn't say like, that. <laughs> uh, Tyron got his... Uh, like, he was from VIC crew, like, uh, in, in, in Amsterdam, like, the oldest crew uh, was all... Which my crew is, like, the 40 UH44. Um the, the 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 old one you have the DSA from Almeida Lelystad and then you have the guys in Rotterdam guys in the south O thirty one and, and VIC Adil, was like Adil the was second group. which crew was a deal in DSA DSA okay yeah the so and v, 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 VIC VIC was like a newer kind of crew but they were also really hardcore and really great bladers and they brought him up. And he was like years and years younger than all the other guys, so he 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 would get punished if he would do stuff weak, you know. He'd be like, "Nah, man, you can't fucking you can't step up your macchios. Fuck that, no stepping on. Hey, you're gonna backslide that shit? <laughs> Fuck freestyle. You're fucking grabbing that thing. And oh, you came you <laughs> he came was off, bullied the whole time, off, basically. Yeah, you came <laughs> off forward, smack. Like nowadays, it's hip to go forward, or maybe not even anymore. But you know these kind of no, no backslide things. would need to go backwards back then. Nowadays, it's yeah. hard, man. If you do a grab backslide, a proper one to forward, it's hard. Yeah. It's harder, man. Or if you try to do it's it to fake the, it the other different. way, like a two seven, it's yeah. so hard. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, you know, backslides are harder nowadays anyway because it's just yeah. faster and stuff. But uh, yeah, Tyron was. Uh, I think you know if there was someone in Holland to to kind of uh, take the crown from Edwin, it, 
it might have been done. And the thing is, he, he still skates every now and then. I know, I know. He's a uh, lot into gymming. Huh? Yeah, the thing is, he's too mus- he's too uh, too muscular at the moment because <laughs> he's too I strong to skate. <laughs> yeah, not flexible enough. Yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, I I filmed the thing with him. Like that was also uh, the, the I'm not you probably saw it, said it. Um, it was like a, an edit which was commissioned by an Amsterdam uh, clothing company mm-hmm. who actually paid me to make it. Uh, okay, I don't know. What are you I, I talking about? I, I don't remember. If you if haven't, I saw it. Uh, then you probably haven't because it's got like the 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 very last clips of Edwin ever. Oh, I saw that one. I saw that one. I don't remember yeah. what clips, but I remember that one. I saw that one. Yeah, it wasn't It wasn't the Edwin Finity uh, documentary. Yes, I, made, I know, but, but I, I know what you're talking about. I don't remember later. tricks, but I remember that video yeah. with a uh, clothing brand yeah. or something like that. Yeah, exactly. It was like uh, with uh, Randy, Randy Avos, Remy Schmidt, uh, Pascal Tan, Tyron Ballantyne, and Edwin Veeding. Because that was like the, the dream team. I was filming... <laughs> Yeah, I was filming with uh, like uh, only the Amsterdamers really, and I was filming with him uh, like two days before he, he he died. So I knew that oh fuck, I wrote his very very last clips, which is a bit fucked. And also he was really excited to go in because I I know there there are like edits I made with him which I forgot because uh, my friend Pascal was also in the edit. And enough said edit when Edwin died, he went and looked for every fucking thing with Edwin's name on it. And he found edits that Kevin made or that I made that neither of us would rem- have remembered. Because <laughs> obviously with, with Edwin, you'd go out to skate. Yeah, that was a section. You, you could film a section up, in one day. <laughs> yeah, easily. Because he would not would miss some tricks, but he would always make them after. And you would destroy spots like in, in, in ways you wouldn't comprehend because like normal people, you know, you, you've got your little alley so Oh, I got the alley so Okay, let's try it to 70 out. Yeah, try it a couple times. Oh, I got it. His start was alley so five out. Well, yeah, okay, next one, true so five out. And, <laughs> he, he, you know, the, the, the tricks he would pull was like, yeah, it's definitely I past know. pro level. Yeah, no. yeah, like uh, like a, all, only a very few pros would be I wouldn't say at that level it's like it was for sure one of the top skaters like setting standards you know what I mean like the next big trick something like that if that makes sense it's kind of like your uh, your, your favorite blader's favorite blader. yeah uh, and also it's like the only like uh, that there there aren't that many people that can for instance go to like Santee crew and become adopted by them. <laughs> it's like he, him, him and Horn. Yeah. You know, the, I, I have uh, such a respect for those guys. They yeah. helped me out tremendously with with, with making Damien the Damien and Nick, the they were really wild. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, and Steve uh, Steinmetz, like one of the driving forces in there. And those guys, yeah, they're fucking. You know, I've, and this is the thing. I, 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 I feel. Uh, Obviously, they're not really friends of mine, but after editing all that shit and being a good friend to Edwin, and those guys are also a good friend of his, it kind of feels like you know, like a connection. And I could also see that those guys are also really, you know, so many people were really tore up by Edwin's passing, uh, like Jason Adriani as well, you know, yeah. it's also a good friend of Edwin. So many people, Jan Welch, like you could say that Jan is kind of his, um, he, you know, mentor. He, he, somehow. I, think that Jan, I know, like he was the first person that really believed in, in him. And yeah, made, I know, I remember. Yeah, that. but Jan, Jan knows Edwin from Holland, not from. Mm-hmm. Hamilton, yeah, from when he Holland, first came you know? for the Lost Call re- video, right? Yeah, well, yeah, Jan has been all over the world for, since forever because. I know Jan from Scum Magazine times. Mm-hmm. That's like people yeah. are saying, what the fuck is Scum Magazine? Well, that's how old we guys are. Scum Magazine is really old magazine. It's like stapled together, uh, black and white, uh, and then later the videos. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's it's getting a bit easier to talk to, uh, to, to talk about Edwin now that it's been a little bit longer. But um, I, I just rewatched the... the the documentary I made about him like a, f- a few few weeks ago 
because after I made that thing, I was like, all right, I put it online and then. How was it to edit that? Uh, yeah, really hard, man. So I, can't, like I, I can't imagine stuff. how hard it is for you to to put like. Tra- Obviously, you want to put feelings in a edit, but when there's, I wouldn't say it's a lot of negative feelings because skating with him was for sure, like something amazing, but something that ended the most tragic way that we can imagine. So it must be weird to know exactly what happened and trying to do something about it. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And even now it's not easy, man. It's, uh, were you there? Were you? No, no. And this is the thing. He'd invited me and I was like, yeah, I can go, but you know how things are and you know, I'm fucking tired and stuff. I was like, yeah, I'm not going to go. And for instance, uh, like Eric Droog, like one of our friends here in Holland also, he, he was there and he just left. And probably if he was there still, he might have still been alive. But, you know, so you can't really there's say nothing that. nothing you can stuff. do. There's, I, I heard like from from Kevin what happened. I know that a lot of people don't know about it. I'm, I don't know if you want to talk about it or not. It's up to you. I'm not going to say anything. It's just, I don't know. It's just, I know how tragic it was. and like It was, it was a drunk accident. That's what you can say. It's a drunk accident and he ended up falling from his balcony. That's the kind of the the, the cut and dried version. Of course, there's a lot more that goes, that goes into it before that stuff happens, but that's kind of the cut and dry, and I don't want to really go into it much more. It's Just, so weird. Such an athletic guy. Like, is it, I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't really, like you said. Yeah, it's fucking alcohol, man. It's a, it's a motherfucker. And, uh, yeah, what you're going to do with so it's, it's, it's just so surreal. You know, uh, it's not supposed to, uh, you know, at our age, we, 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 we've been to a few funerals and stuff, but um, normally at funerals, there's a few young people and a lot of old people. And this was just only young people. It's ridiculous. Dude, it's... You know, I don't I, know. Uh, it's hard to explain. It, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if people, you know, if you've seen the... If you've seen the I've seen the the documentary. Then you know, you know, it starts with the procession. I know, and you see, it's like an endless fucking uh, parade of people. It's there are more people there than than at an, at, at most skate contests, really. More skaters there as well, and uh, yeah, for me, it was just uh, he, he was doing uh, a TV program in which he spoke about his life a lot, and I had so much footage of him. Because I was working on stuff with him, we were doing. Uh, we were going to do a new uh, uh, pro skate edit, or not a pro skate. He was pro for raises, and he needed to drop stuff. So we were doing something big because he saw what we did with City Hopper. He's like, "Hey man, come on, uh, let's do something bigger." So I had so much stuff of his, and of course, uh, Yuri van der Poel had so much footage. Uh, Kevin had so much footage, and then you had these guys that were doing this TV program called the Freestyle Games. Mm-hmm. I remember they that. they they had interviews with him about him being a bit older and thinking, talking about his life after blading. And when I got a hold of that, I already knew, like, okay, this is not going to be a skate edit. Hey, this is going to be a documentary laced with some some of his skating. And uh, in the end, you know, um, uh, what I said, I just rewatched it for the first time in a long time uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, it was still a bit hard. But you can imagine for me editing that shit when I, when I finished it, I was like, all right, it's kind of a letter of love, and you have to get it off of your chest, sort of. You know mm-hmm. how people when when you have problems, it sometimes helps to write them down. Well, this is for me was was like a. Co- only the thing is when you fucking do a documentary of like 22 minutes or something it's <laughs> there's just a fucking work that goes into it and also that I didn't want to uh, let all that footage lie and come up with a documentary like five years after he died you know of this. course no but the thing is what I, the reason why I made it a question that I did is it's you're just telling me how hard it was for you to see it to see it now but like editing 
it's oh. for those okay. who right. never edit. I, I think everyone ever like tried to, not even if they edit the picture to put on Instagram. They know how, how long it takes to edit the picture. Now, to edit a full documentary, you watch it over and over and over and over and over and listen yeah, to I, everything. I just took time and that off must of work. have been like the craziest feeling. I don't know. I, I took time off of work and I, it was, of course, hard to, to not do anything because I still have to pay the bills. So I was editing at night, uh, in the evening, and early mornings, and yeah, the, especially like getting the, the, the intro done, because the first stuff, it's like the first few minutes of the documentary are based on an edit I made for his funeral, because his, uh, his, his family asked me like, hey, um, Remy, you want to make, a, you know, we want to show him some of his skating, but we don't want to show, show anything. Can you make an uh, edit? And of course, that's like only like six days after his death. So that was one of the hardest things. And especially uh, because I told him, well, you're going to tell me which music you want to put in there. Uh, and that made it even harder because the editing that first stuff ultimately was. That was really, really hard. But then after, when I'd done that and went back to to the drawing board and kind of took that as the the start, or not really the start, but like the the, the basis to work around, because obviously the start was the funeral of the, mm -hmm. of the 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 documentary. So I knew kind of that there were certain parts already in my mind how I wanted to make it. But then uh, everybody. Like uh, what I said, Jason from Italy, he sent footage. Uh, you, uh, Bassi, Bas Berghaj, so many people had so much great footage. But also, you know, whoever knew, all of you who know or have known Evan knew that he was like a, a, a happy guy, always laughing. <laughs> And then looking for through, the, through all this footage, of uh failed tricks where we would because the thing is he wouldn't get angry uh or throw with his skates if if he missed a trick he would laugh and obviously i would laugh if i was that good at blading but he would just <laughs> laugh stuff up and then looking through all the, the all the fucking terabytes of footage and uh, finding those laughs oh man i had a, a couple of uh moments of, of crying there and also then afterwards when when you've like say say you work for an evening and you have an extra two to three minutes edited um and you re-watch it when you're really tired you're like oh yeah that was a that was some tough shit but then again i also knew that from because there's many people in in uh in hollow that, uh, that, that make skate videos and make very good skate videos at least i think And it was kind of up to me. That is my opinion to to make this because uh, of my experience in doing some documentaries. And since I work in film, and you know, I'm not trying to say that I'm better than anyone, that anything in particular. But I just thought that I'm the guy who's here at the moment and has to do it. But you were also his friend, and you you were filming something with him. His parents knew about it, so it would all only makes sense that one of his closest friends of one of the persons that may, might have shared the most sessions with him would do it. Yeah. You know? so that would... And I know his parents, you know, I know his brother. Uh, It's amazing. What I can tell you uh... from someone. So I've never seen Edwin's parents before. Of course, I saw them like in a documentary, but I didn't saw them before these years winter clash and their attitude is something out of this world i love that yeah yeah they still they still uh, keep in touch and yeah, uh, they went to winter uh, clash his, his dad made a made a tattoo wasn't it yeah exactly the 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 if 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 ever edwin was going to get a pro skate then uh edwin had a tattoo uh very very narcissistic of himself which is a bit of a obviously something i would take the piss out of <laughs> obviously and still can fucking laugh about because are you going to really take a tattoo and make it and a t obviously a tattoo of himself doing it through top so 
you know he, this guy uh, <laughs> he, he, he know that it was serious to him and for you or me you know I'd fucking laugh I, I would laugh you all the way to South Africa and back but for him it kind of makes it made sense and uh, now his dad has the same tattoo and um yeah, it's a it's it's a thing that if he were was going to get a pro skate, he wanted to have that image on the back of the skate, and yeah, so it's a uh, it's it's a thing. And, That's uh, awesome. He was supposed to have a pro skate, so, but I, I think I heard. I don't know. I don't want to go negative on any brand, and I I love Andy from Razors and everything. So, but I, I thought they were going to make something with Edwin after after what happened, from what I've read, but. It, And nothing ended up happening, so I don't know if I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm if it's my place, but I think something is happening. Okay, okay. That's... So, uh, well, you know that it's uh, Andy's a good guy, you know, and uh, mm. he knows that in the end, um, you know, if if you get pro skate, it says a, it says a little something about that you're actually a good skater. Um, but it says a lot more that you've done of, what you've done for the brand well what you've done for the brand well there's not that many people that have skated razors for such a long time and put out that amount of content as Edwin did um, but there is the there is the thing how many fans do they think you have if you uh, sponsor uh, say um, a Belgian skater how many Belgian skaters are there um, how many people in Belgium are going to buy, um, a, uh, say, an Anthony Potier Pro Razor? And I know he's not skating for Razor, but this was the thing. How many people are there in Holland? There's like 17 million people in Holland, of which a lot of people ice skate and a lot of people rollerblade, but not, not that many people grind on fucking things. Um, so if I see that, you know, because in my opinion, he should have had a pro skate six, seven, eight years ago. You know, with all the people that have been getting pro skates from Razors, there's a couple of people in between there where I think, really him and not Edwin? All right. Mm. But, um, you know, I, I, coming from a commercial background myself, I totally understand that uh, that uh, you have to make decisions uh, based on uh, how many skates you're going to be able to sell Yeah, and, uh, like and having obviously, six pairs of arrogant skates, he was the best. But the last pair of skates, when it came out, he wasn't skating anymore anymore. But arrogant was, yeah. they would sell. That's the thing. Also, it's like exactly when the last yeah. skate came out, he wasn't skating anymore. But the skates would sell. So a brand also needs to see that part. Even if sometimes, for us, that really want skating to be as fair as possible. Sometimes it's ah, it's not unfair. fair. It's a business. <laughs> yeah, but you sometimes know, it feels is, unfair. Um, That's what I'm trying to say. So uh, I totally understand Andy because uh, I, uh, you know, I'm not a razors guy at all. But I have to fucking res uh, give respect where it's due. And this is a guy who's sticking with skating, uh, uh, who could be making loads of money doing other things, mm, and he's not. I know. And and uh, his his decisions. Have made razors into what it is now, so you can't really hate on that. You know, you could say, well, and, and sunshine distribution, but in the end, uh, Kato, for instance, made the decisions with his heart to say, yeah, I'm putting those guys on. Say Dominic Wagner, who's an amazing skater, but uh, it's not the same star potential as say Chris Haffey, uh, even though you could put those guys in kind of in a line together, winning big contests, very influential, etc. Like Rems, for instance, is really hard and soul, uh, and Razors is a little bit more with the mind as well. And I, you know, that's not a bad thing. It's just uh, the way that things are, and especially if you look at your, you know, we've been looking at shrinking market for a couple of years. I don't think that we're in a shrinking market anymore. Not that I have any numbers or claims to back it up, but when I look around and like I told you the other day, I looked outside. You, you said something about bladers on on, uh, on Facebook, as you do. I looked outside. I saw two girls skating on inline skates, and uh, one of them was jumping off of the, the little curb. <laughs> and this is the thing, you know. Uh, I would love It's to see everybody man. do soul grinds, but I, I would 
prefer to to not see blading die. The thing is, I I keep saying the same, and I've been lucky enough to travel, and over the last year, I've been going to a few different places, or even over the last three four years, and and I'm I'm Portuguese. I I remember being the only one in my town, and I remember trying to to grow a whole scene in my town. And I'm from a really, really tiny town. Then we ended up creating something in my town. In Lisbon, there was already a lot of skaters. Nowadays, it's completely different. I wouldn't say there's like 10% of the skaters that it used to be. But also, back, back then, when skater was super, super popular in Portugal, in places like in Brazil or in places like Angola, these two places that have been in the last, year or two or whatever back then skates weren't available like yes in Bra in brazil you had guys like carlos pianoski you had felipe zambardino you had a lot more guys but if you yeah, ask but any, you needed to be in rio or or sao paulo but, but even if you were there if you, if you ask like any of place. them the skates were so 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 expensive but if you go there nowadays yes if you buy any of the big brands they're still expensive but because the interest was there the local brands started making their own skates. And if you go to, seriously, you've been in Brazil, you know exactly what I'm saying. But in Sao Paulo, the scene is like, it's seriously crazy. I've been in, in Paris a few times. I've been in Amsterdam a few times. I've been in Poland. And I know the scenes over there are like healthy. But in South America, it's just, it's seriously crazy. And when I first came to Africa, before I moved to South Africa, I first went to Angola. And it's really hard for for all of us that live in other places that don't have the same problems as they used to have in Angola, like they had no roads, man. Even yeah. they, had, they had no roads. That even if they would want to skate, there were no skates available. Of course, who would want to import skates if there were no roads there? So once they first had roads, skating picked up. And skate picked up a lot more than skateboarding. And nowadays it's still healthy. What what I try to, to say with those videos is like, it's up to us. It's up to us the way we see it. We can look at the, the place that we used to skate and it changed, or we can actually look at other places and, and try to motiv motivate ourselves. And I keep saying the same. How do you want to, to bring a kid to skating? How do you want to bring a kid if, you, if, you, if you're telling him it's dead? No one wants to start something which is dead. Exactly. I mean, yeah, but it's not. You need it's to be lying. as You're positive as people. you want, as you can. I mean, like, it's sometimes for a lot of people. And I know that I had a few messages through Instagram. And I know that some people didn't really enjoy what I what I said. But I hope people understand, like, that doesn't mean that I'm, I don't love skating more than them or I, or that I'm, I'm a clown or I'm trying. Man, it's, it's. I'm expressing exactly what I feel. And I respect that people have different opinions. But I also hope people understand the only reason that people end up seeing my things is because I've been putting a lot of work into that. I've been trying to build my opinion, like not build my opinion, but make my opinion heard, if that makes sense. You know, like trying to bring some power to my opinion. And that's a lot of work every single day. So it's it's hard to explain some sometimes for some people, but I respect everyone and I understand like if you are like an artist, you don't want your thing to be popular. You want to do your thing, yeah. you want to do your thing on the other and I respect that, man. Everyone have their own view, their own different way of relating with skating. And I res I respect also if you're in a place that skating is not the same as it used to be. But at the same time, if you keep on just bringing that negative image, you're just making it go down. But that's that's an opinion. Anyway, nothing to do with it. Well, the thing is, what what is the same as it used to be then? We, we used to uh, have to go somewhere and uh, I'd say, hey, Ricardo, I'm going to see you there uh, by the square about three o'clock. And you would think, <laughs> oh, fucking Remy guy, always late. So, okay, I'm going to, he said three o'clock, I'm going to be there half past three. And if he's there, then I'll wait until four because things were different back then. You know what? You would, call his, house, you would call his house, You would call his house and ask his parents, yeah. is he there? Yeah. Is, is, is Remy he there? already gone? <laughs> yeah. The, the thing is, of course, uh, we look back and we think, oh man, back in the day, it used to be great, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. All right. What, what used to be great? 
Having to buy new skates every okay. Hello? Give me a second, give me a second. Wait, 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 wait. Hello? Can you hear me now? I can I can hear you. Have okay. you found the charger? We're back. <laughs> no, it's just like, dude. So I got this Zoom H5 recorder and usually I, I connected through USB. But today, again, I didn't have the cable and I had to use batteries and the batteries just <laughs> ended. So for those people listening to this that don't know, we were supposed to do this on a Sunday morning and we're doing, uh, on a Sunday night, Sunday evening, and we're doing this on a, we're doing this on a Monday evening because yesterday I didn't add another cable too, so. <laughs> anyway, do you remember where we were? <laughs> People were saying about the things were better back in the day. And, yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, I don't think so, really. <laughs> Dude, let I, me tell um, you something. Let me tell you why they weren't better. Yesterday, I skated a spot that you filmed something with Sven Bookers in Cape Town. That, oh, yeah. I think it's the hardscape, whatever. That red monument that he put a ramp oh, yeah. just railed up. It, that was impossible to do before. That, <laughs> so don't come and tell me that skating was better. I'm sorry. Like There would be a lot of things that would be different. There was no better. It's just like saying there's a better skater or there's a worse skater. There's no better. It's like different times. So I, I, I always laugh when people say, yeah, yeah, Aaron Feinberg is better than <laughs> All right. Um, no. You know, man. I this is the thing. I was living back in those times as well. And obviously, you know, there's a, the thing is, you can say, for instance, Dustin Latimer had such a great, great, great impact. But to say, for instance, that Eugen doesn't have a great impact right now you you see how many people do you see doing alley -oop top assets and grabbing their front foot all of a sudden yeah of course but people I doing cr crazy funny ninja shit you know and of course people everybody's been doing everything before already but just like you said in that uh in your uh in your vlog about uh Oigen and his gang getting 1.7 million views in two months. You know, I'll tell you that there hasn't been uh, anything with anyone that does grinding on rollerblades ever in the world to get that, that amount of views. That no, and then to and then to also know that Facebook is actively stifling video. It's not like it used to be a few years ago where you put something on YouTube and it would just go. It's uh, my hats off to uh, to uh, and Daniel for making that shit. And no, is is amazing. It's that's like, the way you get people to grind. Uh, the way you get people interested in fucking grinding on skates. Because I love the, the the power slide and the rollerblade videos that show people having actual fun on skates and obviously doing cool stuff. It's completely but, different. Yeah, this this is something. It made me want to actually go. Skate. Even though I'm fucking jaded and old, and I, I'm like, yeah, man, skating. I haven't been into it as much as I was when I was younger, and I'm still totally into it. But you know, when you're younger, you're more and more into it. And it's a different it type of being into it. Now you're into it in a smart way, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah and you also think of life. You think said, of your daughter at home. It's like, yeah, I yeah. need to. I want to do the alley oop top soap. But I haven't done an alley-oop top sole in two months and it's I need to choose or I get my, my daughter at school or I try the alley-oop top sole and I hit my knee. So I might as well just yeah. do a sole, come back, like come out clean and go get my daughter. It's, it's a different type of skating. I'm not saying it's better or worse. It's just different. And also I think that if you're uh, guys like you and I, uh, what the hell do we have left to prove? <laughs> I you guess know? yes. You do it because you want it. If, thing, I, it's like um, you know. For the last year and a half, I've been doing a lot of uh, weightlifting, fitness in the gym, and uh, there's like a thing when you see people in the gym who are kind of cheating themselves uh, and uh, putting in their little book that they did this many reps and this <laughs> weight. It's like you're cheating against yourself, you. You idiot. It's like skating. It's like 
you're not skating against anybody but yourself. And for me, you know, uh, I I don't I don't see a reason to, 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 to fake it. And also, you know, it's like everything you do for enjoyment. Uh, one day you're going to enjoy yourself a tiny little bit more than the next. And I'm sure that people have sessions where they do incredible tricks and still not really happy. Like, for instance, when I, I was filming for my 41st birthday mini ramp edit, mm-hmm. and I, I, I got home and I was in a foul, foul mood. And my wife was like, what the fuck? Did the skating, was the skating, did it suck? I was like, yeah, man, it sucked. I didn't land this and that. And I was really, I was, I, I, I didn't notice this until she pointed it out. Like, hey, man, you're in a bad mood. What the fuck? And obviously, we'd filmed a lot of stuff. And I started editing it. I was like, oh, actually, uh, I did land a couple of cool tricks. I was like, mm-hmm. and then you can kind of see that, you know, what you feel is very subjective especially when you film it or have your friends film stuff, you're like, all right, you actually did do some cool stuff, right? Get, get, you know, turn that frown upside down, et cetera, et cetera, you know, because you're only doing this for yourself. Man, and the it's... fact that I didn't do a fakey three alley top sole on a thing, I'm like, who the fuck cares? Really, you were there, you skated. The I, I keep one... saying the same. The most important is that you're enjoying yeah. it, man. It's just, that's the thing. Exactly. But yeah. I still have this kind of, thing in my mind and this is obviously coming from back back then (laughs) yeah when you when you were just not going to leave a spot alone until you fucking owned it Uh, (laughs) it, leaving blood and skin on the floor didn't matter as long as you fucking went to the end of that rail or or landed the gap or did did the switch up you wanted to and obviously none of us rollerbladers would have ever been able to land any trick if we didn't have any perseverance because mm, uh, so. this is also you know if i look back in the day when i started blading there were so many people that had some talent and maybe more talent than you or I, but they didn't uh, have yeah. what it took to stick with it and i think oh man this guy was so great if he would have just stuck with it another year he would have been able to travel all over the world just because he was good at playing with wheeled boots <laughs> but they don't matter because they probably do other stuff like for instance uh, Tyron is one of the most talented bladers I know and he's choosing not to skate because he's got something else that's a lot of fun as well yeah that's the thing you know, usually of- people try to follow what what brings them the most joy wanting or not and if you're doing something else then there must be something wrong with you like if you if, if you can't choose and if you choose something that you don't enjoy or if if nothing really makes you do it because like if you need money and if you need to work a lot of time that's perfectly understandable but like if you're choosing to do something that you don't enjoy then something is wrong with you anyway do you have any other projects like the one we were talking with Sven the city hopper well um for for Sven and me there there's been enough time between city hopper world and now that it's starting to itch a little bit again. And uh, also, I, I would have thought, well, Sven's, you know, going to be retiring. And, <laughs> That's what he said. Huh? <laughs> yeah, but he's still, he's still killing shit. He's still good. Uh, he's still so good. I, there's a, I would like to do another thing. Because the thing, you know, really, if, you're, uh, if you really want to do something in blading, then you need to have, like, uh, have... A guy, a talent you know, like you him. Need, <laughs> yeah, for instance, if you look at Erod, he his guy was Frankie. Yeah, he could, he could go out and film with Frankie, and it would be fucking awesome. And obviously, he has a, a slew of other guys. Uh, look at Adam Johnson. Yeah, like Daniel with Alex. Daniel with Eugen. With Eugen. Yeah, it's... yeah, but if for instance, you know, at some. Uh, uh, it's like my selfie stick with me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go. What would your selfie stick be without you? But uh, if you look at nowadays, for instance, uh, uh, <laughs> look at uh, the the elite series and stuff. You have to go out and find a way and actually put in the work to really get that stuff done. And for me, having a, a, a you know, it's not I don't have a steady job because. 
for me, I just work freelance and I can do whatever I want, really. Did you but get nicely paid by Rollerblade to do that project? Nah, well, not not as horribly paid. And uh, it's let's put it this way: I would have made uh, five to ten times more if I stayed home and just worked my normal corporate stuff. But then I wouldn't have been all those places and wouldn't have been able to do all that cool stuff. And I have to say that when we did City Hopper, everything was sorted out nicely. Um, also the City Hopper Europe. And, and of course, the, the, the thing what's, what people need to know with City Hopper is uh, it's not just me and, 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 Sven and Axel and, and Niels and Sven and Timmy going out and getting stuff. We, the, the City Hopper crew is like a, more than 100 people because we have a crew in Barcelona, we have a crew in Rio de Janeiro, we have a crew in Cape Town. For instance, people don't know this, but the fucking awesome uh, aerial sh of uh, Cape Town, you made them. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah you, well, you need to get like the, the locals to to help yeah, the project happening, of course. The, 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 the awesome aerial shots we go Shanghai, like a, a local a Russian guy who lives there. Um, we had so much help on every stop where we were. Um, and you ended up well, making a, a double project, right? It was not just the city hopper. It was the city hopper and the 80 millimeters. So you guys ended up making everything in one, which was smart. Exactly, yeah. The, the, the 80 millimeters was actually paying for the city hopper in a way. Okay. Because uh, obviously it's, it's, it's kind of successful because we've got now more than 300,000 views. No, there's like more. The, you, no, no, the City Hopper, maybe, but uh, the one from China, at least? The 80 oh, millimeters the, in China, the, there's like, I think, those, almost those, a million. Yeah, those are ridiculous. Uh, especially the, 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 obviously, that has quite a, a lot wider audience. Yeah, it's like and the that skate that sells the, the most. 80 millimeters is the skate that sells the most from every single brand. Yeah, of course. They are. If, if you the Google. Best, best skate to play on. If you, I don't know. I guess it's like, if you Google. <laughs> it's a, if you Google beginners inline skate or if you beginner rollerblade or whatever you want to call it, it's gonna be every everywhere. It's gonna say that the best skate is eighty millimeters. Yeah. So yeah, exactly, yeah. The 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 that was like a good thing because we, when we did City Hop for Holland, we did it for literally nothing, just for fun, and uh, we got like a, a a little bit of money for for gas. And, and some food and some drinks. Yeah, but it was good when for a, project, City... a pilot project. You could show what you could exactly. do. Exactly. And then we did City Opera Europe. We got a little bit of money and then still it was, we did it as cheap as possible because we drove everywhere and we, we did have hotels and stuff. Uh, but we did everything with, with friends. Uh, but then City Opera World, obviously, you know, you can't just rely on sleeping on people's floors when you're going out with a big crew. Dude, but stuff. what's so coming next? Cost. City Hopper Moon. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. We, uh, After seeing the spots, what else can <laughs> what else can he skate? It's just like <laughs> yeah, we should ask him. He's a, he's got. You know, he's gonna need we, to find an island the in the middle of nowhere and just I don't know, ride the palm trees. I don't know. They're like after seeing the spots, the spots that I've seen, it's just. Yeah. <laughs> they don't make sense they do not but make sense the, the, the problem is if you want to go even bigger then uh, you're going to break yourself because this the, the, the biggest trick of the city hopper stuff and you saw the be at the LA stop is to not get fucking broken Yeah. because we can't just say oh okay so we go to Rio and the first trick uh, you're going to fucking uh, smash your ankle mm -hmm. you can't man. and uh, you know what we're just gonna go and come back later no <laughs> doesn't work that way so the, the way that he has to skate is always uh, smart smart yeah recklessly smart but because you you have to forget about danger when you're doing stuff like that dude uh, but then again you all think you know go exactly as far and as high as you can and can still <laughs> and stuff because he's tried stuff which which we you know some some stuff is, that's uh, 720 corkscrew <laughs> what was that 
into the flat. You know, that's that spot is really we we found that spot really early on in our uh, uh, in our scouting because when we went to Rio, we had the greatest crew there. The mm. guys, I have to give big big up. To, uh, to Rafael Romano, Kaleo. to uh, Hafa, Veruca, uh, to Renato, uh, to to the, the the all of those guys. Rolling Sports, fucking amazing! I know. Uh, JP, not to forget those guys were like fucking heaven sent. And uh, Sven and I decided, you know, to stay uh, to go there a bit early and uh, for, for just pay for our own. So we could get like the extra air, go get lapses, get get everything sorted, and because we put more of our own time in, uh, it ended up I think being maybe the best stop we ever did. And that place uh, in uh, Niteroi, which is not actually in Rio, but just on the other side of Rio, mm -hmm. uh, across the water, and we found that place, and it's like a famous uh, architects made it famous Brazilian artist. Did you saw it online or you went there to see it first? I think I think we looked at it uh, in Google Street View first um, because what Sven did to find stuff in countries or cities he's never been it's just Google Street View the hell out of everything. Mm. That's the way he found most of the That's stuff. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, he's got a lot of free time this guy. But uh, then when we went <laughs> but there He is a professional skater, right? In Not a, just yeah, in a way, he gets paid. He gets paid. Uh, he's played. Okay. Um, so that's uh, and he does marketing. Full time job. He's in charge of. Yeah, well, I'm not sure if it's 100 full time because he has his own company. I know. I know. SB Mind SB events, mind the gap, and, and those kind of things. In in the summer, he's quite busy with that as well. So not totally full time, but that's skating as well. So you could say, he's, well, he's totally a professional skater, and uh, I think the only skater I know that's been able to buy Maybe a house so from, from from the ex and win. <laughs> yeah, so, because he knew <laughs> where he wanted, and he put the money on the side and all that, right? From yeah, what I heard. but uh, the back to the seven. Yeah, we had to pay to skate there because. This is one thing, uh, you know, coming from a, a country which is so straight and, and, and clean and honest like Holland. Uh, <laughs> we, I was not prepared for the level of corruption uh, <laughs> that there was in Brazil. But in a, in a way, it, it really helped us. Is that meant that uh, no only meant yes, but it's going to cost you money. And when we first started finding out if we could skate there, they were like, yeah, yeah, oh, if European camera crew with a skater, yeah, 5,000 euro. And we were like, fuck, 5,000, fuck out of here. No, not going to happen. Uh, but Renato, uh, who uh, had uh, the skate shop there, would also kind of, uh, you know, they, they paid a bit for us to be there. And uh, he knew how things worked. And it's, I was playing around with him for one week to all these spots and he would give this guy five euro this guy one euro and get in front of everything and not pay and get in front of the line all that stuff he talked to those guys and he talked them down from five thousand euro down to 200 euro and then not even giving them money but in the end we bought 200 euro worth of printer cartridges because that's what they actually really needed mm -hmm. and uh yeah, this is just something I was not prepared for because normally if we find out, well, it's be behind the fence and they have security, so it's not going to fucking happen. You know, I would just think, tough. <laughs> but he was like, no, no, no. But this is this is Rio de Janeiro, let's go. I'm going to fucking find a way. <coughs> and uh, yeah, this, in the end, we, we were there flying the drone and uh, like, <laughs> uh, two, two cameras and how long did uh, it took guys. him to land? Oh no, Sven does that uh, that stuff the uh, first try. <laughs> That's one. Yeah, that, that was maybe. another question that I had after. Let let I'll let you finish and then I'll put my question. Well, no, this that's really the thing for for Niteroi, We just had to, uh, and actually another place where we filmed. I I gave the guy some free aerial footage of some other stuff because it was like a, 
uh, aerial footage fanatic. We we just did a lot of stuff in Brazil, which in Europe would just not fucking happen. At mm. least not in North Europe. I can imagine. But, did did uh, you flew the the drone in the favela? No, no, I didn't bring it. Okay. I could have because we, we maybe, maybe they would got, shoot uh, it up. <laughs> they would think would be police, maybe. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I've been to two two separate favelas. One was the pacified favela where the Rocinha, favela de Rocinha, yeah, which Rocinha, is dangerous, but exactly. if you know someone, right? That's the thing. We knew someone, yeah. and we'd also went to a party in uh, the favela called Babylon, mm. which was not so pacified as I think. Uh, but, uh, yeah, also we were there. We were guests, and what I learned there is, if you're in the favela and you're like a gringo like me, totally lily white, then um, especially walking around with skates and cameras and stuff, <laughs> I was actually more safe there than I was on the on the, on the beach or the boulevard because. All the, 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 the bad guys there, they see you and they know, well, it's impossible that it's an accident that this guy is here. Yeah. He has to be a guest of someone and they don't know. He knows that he's doing start. something like that. <laughs> yeah. So probably you don't want to go and fuck with him because he might be the guest of the head guy and if you fuck with him. And it was so strange because in the beginning, like, I've never been to a favela or. Anything for, just explain what's a favela like for for people don't that don't know what that is. If you look in, in Rio, it's very mountainous, uh, and you have a really extremely expensive real estate set right next to like the ghettoest of ghettos. And I'm talking ghetto as in, in buildings that people built themselves with no all the uh, with made of metal and yeah, with windows, no glass in the window. Yeah, checks and there's clothing hanging everywhere, and everybody's just pissing, uh, pissing on the street in the yeah, corners. And the and streets, because some of them are like one meter wide, and you need to go through them. <laughs> it's sketchy. Exactly, it's sketchy as fuck. And uh, for me, you know, obviously we're not scared of of anything, or else we wouldn't have gone there. But as like the stupid way of not being scared, you know, because we really were putting sort of maybe not our lives, but least our cameras and stuff in the hands of uh, well you put it in the list buddies in cape town is, is created a place that you you probably felt safe bontieville where you filmed the the kid just doing that and flip in the road yeah that's a really really sketchy place that that region um yeah. there's like there's a train station over there and it's probably one of the most known train station for the gang wars to the gangs to exhibit what they did the night before basically <laughs> people well, this is i think the thing with city hopper because we we uh, rely on uh, the people the locals uh, yeah and if this is the thing if the locals bring you then you kind of have a, a passport yeah, in safe. a way yeah. you you are allowed to be there just because you have these guys yeah of course and for us to to, to, to be in the favelas and to be in uh, like the what you call Bontival, those places. Bontival, it's a ghetto. It's a favela, like the favela, just a different Bontival, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's, a, it's a same shit all over the world. But for us to come from like one of the richest countries in the world, like Holland, you know, <laughs> we have it very, we have it very well here in Holland compared to those places. Um, but in the end, it's all about who you know and, and if if. Also, don't go and be an asshole there. Of course. Because then yeah. you can you can have, you know, if you're going to be an asshole, you're going to get in trouble. But, but that's uh, everywhere in the world, I, and you should respect people no matter where you are. So I guess exactly. that's just a rule to live, to live. Anyway, my question, my next question would be, I kind of like, when I look at Sven and I look at you, it's kind of like opposites, you know? It's just like I always thought of Sven as the most, concentrated guy like clean that go to the event that doesn't go out at night the next day goes I, there and he's a skate machine and then you after the what way. you just said the guy that steals pain the guy that <laughs> if it's not illegal how did you guys work together in a, such a project that I don't know so different and so the same I don't know it's kind of a hate love relationship with a lot of love but also some hate and um, also a thing I think probably for Sven, um, 
you know, we've been skating together for such such a really long time, and like I have to say that City Hopper is not just my, my idea with Sven; it's totally hundred uh, percent also Randy's idea, who's Randy, like Sven's best friend from when they were really small. So we we know each other, um, and Sven sometimes he could use uh, someone to uh, to tell him to. Uh, to, to stop fucking pussing about and fucking get shit done and go out and get it and you know let's go now you can do it fuck off don't think about shit let's go and he'd ah, fucking Remy, uh, and he'd be like an old guy and grumpy but then he would be like okay fuck fuck this guy I'm just gonna show him here we go bump and it, we did so much we did so much stuff like that where. You know, we would be somewhere, he would be pussying about and would get on his nerves. But also, it'd be like, yeah, man, we have, like, I'm holding a camera here, Axel is over there holding a camera, we have Neil somewhere, we have uh, Timmy holding the GoPro, we're all here for you, homie. Get it fucking done. <laughs> and, so you're uh, basically the guy in box, in boxing, you would be the guy slapping in his face. <laughs> yeah, a little, sometimes. Uh, also, sometimes he needs to be... Uh, he needs to get a little hug or, or, or a pat on the back. Uh, it's just also a thing you have it's to It's the same guy, the same well. guy that slaps him in the face. <laughs> yeah, it's well, the, yeah. The thing is, if you saw the City Hopper, what happened in LA, you know, him fucking yeah. busting his head yeah. open. Crazy. That's like, you know, at that moment, I'm not thinking that the whole uh, City Hopper is, 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 is going to be fucked because we can't film anything. I'm just thinking, hey, it's see friend bleeding on the ground, man, what the fuck? Is he, does he have brain damage or? Yeah, of course. Man. Are, are we are we going to be in the hospital the next two weeks or can he even fly back home? Um, so many things, and then in the end, this guy is, like takes a week off and he still. <laughs> and that's what people people might not know, but the tricks he did in the LA part in City Hopper, those were kind of the hardest things I've ever seen him do because he he still had a concussion. He was skating these big fucking things and all the while trying to land softly. How are you going to fucking grind a rail that's like 20 meters long and, and, and two and a half meters high and land softly? You know, but he can he can pull it off. But also I have to say this guy has more lives than a cat. There's, a there's so many there's so many times there's in, in, in City Hopper uh, Holland, there's this one time in Den Bosch, his home hometown. He wants to do a macchio stall on a pillar in front of a big church, and he just misses the hole. He goes over, and this thing is almost four meters high. And I remember when he missed it, I thought, "Well, this is going to be his head in the fucking pavement." And in I don't know how he managed to do it, but he just turned around midair <laughs> and landed on his feet. <laughs> you know how if you if you grab a cat and you just toss it, yeah. And pull, <laughs> He's like that. He has that kind of uh, uh, thing. So, yeah, this uh, must also say that we kind of know that he has this nine lives. So we're a little bit less afraid to tell him, <laughs> yeah, man, you can make it. No, no, it's not a problem. You go, you've done that stuff before. And then we'd be like, I hope he doesn't die this try. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we want, I, it would be cool to do something, uh, to do something again, but. Uh, it's a lot of money and a lot of uh, time to, to, to do something uh, outside of Europe because uh, literally when we did stuff in, uh, in Europe we would just for instance uh, Ber when we did Berlin and London we would only be there for three or four days and we could just <laughs> drive up real quick and drive back but um, yeah we, 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 we want to do something in Japan that would be really cool Land of the Rising Sun it's like uh, I know that he's got a he, he he's kind of got a little dream about that, but yeah, I don't know. We might want to just think of something totally different uh, because it's like uh, with City Hopper, what you said, where are you gonna go? The moon? <laughs> um, Spaceship? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. But uh, yeah, and I think also it's it's it's. We might have, you know, it, it might have already been. It's just it's like what we said in the first one. There's limitless possibilities when you bring a jump ramp because there's so much more spots you can skate that you can. 
That's amazing. Uh, okay, yeah. I'll be waiting for that one. I know it's going to be good anyway, so I'll be waiting. For yeah, if, if if anybody has a good idea what what Sven and I should film next, uh, feel free to drop it in the comments. That's cool. <laughs> and be outlandish. That would be cool. Okay, so now, just before we finish, one question. For someone who has almost 300 pairs of skate of shoes, how many skates do you have? Wow. Um, At the I moment, out, the ones that you skate. Oh, um, the ones that I skate. Um, we're not I talking about a, collectibles. I have my... Uh, uh, the rollerblades with the 125s, uh, okay. which I use for work. The twisters. Mm -hmm. I have my Salomons, destroying the industry one grind at a time. <laughs> what you gonna do when when there's no more Salomons, man? <laughs> uh, yeah, skate whatever, kill. man. <laughs> no, uh, uh, no, I'm gonna skate whatever's there. Uh, I, I have a lot of lights. Or I think I think I have Valor lights. My friend Devril might still have them. Uh, Randy's little brother, and he might also still have my Aeon. Okay. So I have Valor light Aeon, the the the, 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 the Salomon uh, ST. Uh, Ninety-two. Whatever. Oh, I have. That's the one, the black one, and I also have the Einberg, but I haven't modded them yet. Okay. So I have to try. Although I tried them on and. They were not nearly as comfortable as the soft boot Salomons. Ooh, I had the, I had the ST ninety two. Oh. It was never my thing, man. I like it's I skated them in man. Paris. They were they, I I don't know, man. I think it was because of that the the cuff that you could make it like rock, not really rockable. I think it was rockable. You could put one side a little bit bending more yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's I true. don't know. I kind of always felt that that skate was too soft for me. It is soft, but the, the thing is, I used to like harder skates, but now I'm older, I'm getting a little bit... Lazy. I'm getting lazy and a little bit of a pussy, and when I when I put them on and I tried a true top sole, I was like, I don't even have to bend my knees this far, man, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, need to get the Vinnie Mintons. Have, I, I, think, I, I think the Vinnie Mintons come with true spin top soles already inserted. Uh, yeah, with the the, 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 the the fucking the ugly blocks on the side. With the shit. <laughs> no, no, the yeah. Vinnie did they come with a block? With a wide body? Yeah, those were ugly, man. <laughs> but uh, what I what I am excited about, though, is uh, I've pre-ordered, the obviously, the the Dem 709s. Mm. Dem skates. I, um, I, I spoke to uh, number one fashion victim in rollerblading, Robbie Pitts, uh, for a long time. When we I were love Robbie, man. You know that he's going to be yeah. our next. He's going to be my next skate talk. <laughs> oh, I'm going to uh, hereby big shout out to Robbie. You can sell those skates, man. Well done. I love uh, Robbie, man. But uh, yeah, we, I spoke with him for a while about those skates, and I spoke to John, and I, I love John. He's like, he's he's like a guy. He's always th th three weeks older than I am. I always <laughs> he look knows at him a lot like, more than you. Those three weeks fucking, were <laughs> fucking. Fucking John is still skating. I I, I still can't quit. Um, and uh, obviously, uh, after hearing his uh, podcast, hearing his the podcast, mushroom Getting podcast, yeah, yeah, man, it uh, it was moving. And you know, from knowing the guy, also for fucking, not like I'm a great friend of his, but you know, when you've seen each other in blading for, yeah, for over heart. twenty years. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and uh, you know he went from being like an icon and a role model to being a guy whose phone number you'd have and who you'd who'd call you when he was in Amsterdam or or you know or needed some some something sorting out. I just thought those skates, I need to fucking buy them, and I would have bought them even if they uh, if if they didn't fit me. But I wore the the, the sample pair uh, at uh, Winter Clash. And uh, when I was, I was just having a beer and talking with Robbie for a long, longest time, and I just kept that skate on. I was like, if they're going, going to hurt my foot in within half an hour, and I had those shits on for like an hour, and they just started feeling better and better. I'm really and, happy to uh, see that you found a solution for Solomon. <laughs> ah, yeah, for sure. No, but these skates, if if they're uh, if they're as good as they, uh, if they're as good as I think they are then I'm going to skate them full-time. 
and uh, I'm just going to uh, have them in all black, and uh, I-, I will get used to the funny way they look because uh, this is one of the things that I think you know it's like the elephant in the room. I think you're going to adjust to it, man. It's just like every other yeah, state. Yeah, I remember. Is, I remember. I used to love Argos. We come from Argos. the Bauer time. I remember. I used oh, to yeah, love but the Argos, oxygens, and a lot of people Argos just ate cool. on them. No, no, the Argos were fucking cool. They were like big mountain boots <laughs> kind of stuff. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, the, the the lacing thing with the yeah, it takes a lot of getting used to. But the thing is, when I wore them and I I really pulled tight, it does really work very nicely, and the flex was good and. So I'm just, and also keep in mind that the first Valos weren't that pretty. And I'm not saying that these are the, the, these skates, the, the, they're the ugliest skates there, because they're not, they're definitely not. Especially when you have small feet like I do, they look, they look all right. But the thing is, I have like, John, John is a sneakerhead, a real sneakerhead as well, which you could see in all his Valo skates. And I have uh, a big, Big, a lot of faith in mm-hmm. his ability to make that skate look fucking awesome. Because obviously, he's got plans to make that skate. Uh, you know, the, the, you need to have the base model down. Make sure that it skates well, like the Majestic. You know, it's like I'm sure that if really he keeps wrong. selling, we the the last time I made a skate talk was with John. And if the the thing keeps going the way it is going. Is probably going to be able to do his own mold the way he wants it. I'm not saying that this one is good or, or bad. I love what he's doing, and I said it more than once. But I believe that if if he keeps going, if he keeps doing good, he might be able to do his own thing or do the changes that he needs to do or that he wants to do. Not that he needs, but the ones that he wants to do. And like you said, is is proven to all of us that he has a really good taste and. Or he has a good taste, or he has a a really good way to influence all of our tastes. So <laughs> he's nah, gonna make us like true. it. So no matter what he does, which well, is amazing. Uh, it, that might be like ten percent of it, um, <laughs> but I think the, the the fact of the matter is uh, he knows about aesthetics. Mm. You know, the thing is, he he knows how to make skating look good, and uh, the th- I I have you know. With with having held those skates, the the only thing really that didn't gel right with me is the the funny lacing system. And if that's the only thing, because the the silhouette of the skates is nice. If you look at them from the top, it's it's nice. The 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 material, the matteness, the matte finish, mm-hmm. it's, it's just it's pretty good. I can see this go somewhere, and there is no reason <laughs> whatsoever why these skates couldn't come with the skin. And what frame are you gonna skate with them? Um, I just have to kiss my wife goodnight. <laughs> slap liquor, okay. Um, slap liquor. Like what frames um, are skates uh, create? Okay. Or no, I might want. I I, I want to try the wish frames. Yeah. Be- because I've been stocking all kinds of different sizes cosmos. So I'm gonna make a bowl set up and a street. And you had a lot of wheels from that Rochester time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, actually, the only ones that survived are a, a pair of Hall Greens, which I'm skating at the moment. Ooh, uh, don't skate them; put them on the side. <laughs> You're gonna be making when? millions on Google, <laughs> on on <laughs> on eBay. <laughs> oh, I have uh, I have uh, work to make millions. But, well, not maybe millions of rand, maybe. <laughs> But yeah. not euros. Million of but, cents. Uh, you can always make millions, man. Millions of fun. It doesn't matter. The, the thing is, <laughs> I was saving those hull greens for the longest time. And I, then I thought, you know what? You know, and I, I've, I'm already skating them for like two or three years now. That's I'm awesome. just not street skating those. You know, I skate them in ramps and bowls and skate park. And I just figured, for who am I saving these? <laughs> to wait until I'm fucking 50? Uh, no, man. Just skate them, and also I must say that back in the day, the difference between Cosmo and the rest was so huge. But nowadays, you have so many. Yeah, very you have good wheels. You have the hydrogens, with, you have the undercovers, you have Elogy. These three wheels yeah. are amazing too. So. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, I love the hydrogens and I love Elogies, and I think actually hydrogen wheels, like the first times I skated them, were the 80 millimeters, which were originally I mean, twisters, and 
I was just amazed that I could just <laughs> skate that do fast. it downhill, <laughs> skate that fast, but also turn on a dime. Like I, I literally once rode into a wall because I thought I'm going to slide a little bit, and they just took me left. Like <laughs> the grippy, but, uh, but you get used to it. You learn how to slide at all that. Oh, but it just takes time. When did yeah, you well, get the grippy? I haven't learned to slide the the, the 125 yet because I'm a bit I'm a bit f- afraid that I'll break my ankles because my my boots I have the the old twister boot which used to be mm. like have an 80 millimeter no, it's frame. It's good, on. man. It's good. My friend Greg, he skated the 125 frames on the twister and he skated the softest frame from power slide and he, he could do slides and stuff. The thing is, yeah, but that's you're Greg. Be it's working not me. With yeah. the camera, you don't want to play around with a camera and 125 as well you're learning how to slide but you got it it's just so easy the thing is for all of us that come from the set slide area like the shuffle it's a completely different movement like doing a slide on wheels to a shuffle yeah. used to be it's not a jump it's just like a quick turn it's a different thing it's more it? like it's more like on ice skates yeah it's more like a quick it's turn and then I you turn it. your hips and face forward it's just a it's a momentum thing more than anything else you'll get it yeah, but the thing is, to do it on very, like, for instance, the way Nick Lomax does them, when he's going incredibly fast, and just, yeah, there's a, there's a, yeah, it's, um, <laughs> for me, the, the the sliding on wheels is kind of a new thing, well, new thing, I've been trying that for, for quite a, like, a few years, but um, after getting the hang of it, it's, um, it's a, yeah, it's a fun way of doing something slightly Bring, dangerous on 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 your your, yeah. your place it's skates. like challenging yourself you yeah. know what when I, before i started aggressive skating i was like 15 i used to be a speed skater and when i first had my first inline skates i saw a guy luke lenoir i saw it on on eurosports some downhill thing and i remember seeing that guy doing a slide kind of like skis and my coach used to hate me man my, all my colleagues and my team they used to hate me because the fuck is this guy doing why is he just burning the wheels like trying to wheels. slide yeah. with 580 yeah. millimeters and I, I remember that i learned how to slide back then but then i never again did slides because on aggressive skates the boot would touch would be a shuffle be completely different and then about three yeah. years ago when i got my first 125 in the first day i ended up getting it but i first got like just kind of like a training not a training wheel i call it that royale with uh, one wheel something like that yeah. i don't remember it's not a training wheel. I, I remember wheel seeing barrel, the something like that. Do, do you remember uh, Ivan Gagliardo? Yes, those full guys, speed. Man. Full speed. The, those guys doing downhills in the rain. That that's the what's the name? Was it Swiss dressing? Yeah, no, and the other the, guy is the one that I'm telling you, Lenoir. Yeah, the, the, uh, yeah, I saw that on TV, man. Yeah, yeah me I too. Remember on when Eurosport. I just started skating. <laughs> yeah, I saw it on TV. It was like yeah. what? That's sick. Fuck and God. then people forgot about it somehow. It's cool that all yeah. this big wheel thing bring it back. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And also, I think that the whole big wheel thing it might it might save us, yeah, or think, at least. Yeah, I know what you mean. I think it's a good thing because it's even like the three wheel skate thing. It's a completely different image. Even like the the wizard frames, it's a completely different image. Like the, when people look at that, they feel like, "What's that?" And then they see people skating, and it's not that running on cobblestone you know it's like, it looks exactly. like something fluid that smoothness that's what Fast. people want to that's that's why people go to ice and they want to skate it's not because of the people that are holding on the walls on the ice ring it's because of the ones that can actually skate and glide and all that and with big wheels you can <laughs> so remy i'm sorry about that uh basically i just run out of battery i'm sorry i think you really we really need to wrap it up so it's it's almost 11 we both have our baby sleeping and wives. I guess it's time to finish. I'm sorry, man. I went through too much battery. Next time we'll have a cable. So, <laughs> cheers. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, I get that, man. Uh, let's be nice to the environment and wrap it up. Uh, too much batteries to use. Hey, thank you for the opportunity. And uh, it was nice chatting to you again. And, uh, you know, keep up the good work with the vlogs and the YouTubes and everything. And uh, I'll catch you on the internet, buddy. See you later. Thanks, man. Thank you, really. Thank you for spending the time doing this and keep doing what you've been doing because we really need more people like you. 
And for everyone listening to this, I'm ending this with some WhatsApp voice messages between me and Remy, because just like I said, there's no more batteries. So if you guys enjoyed this one, don't forget to give us some thumbs up. Like Remy said, if there's anything that you want to know, or if you have any ideas for Sven Booker's next project, maybe drop us a comment. I'm sure that Remy is going to be reading them, also Sven, and more people might just enjoy and get the idea. And that's it, guys. For everyone who watched the, who, who listened to this, and I just want to say again, thank you, and don't forget why we all started skating, because it's fun. Cheers, guys. See you soon. Vou viver.